a beautiful mild day in Foxborough. Capacity crowd here at Sullivan Stadium for this matchup of the Red Hot 6-2 and two Jets and the 5-3 and three Patriots who come off a week of upheaval. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert with John Brody. The big story here, the firing of Ron Meyer, hiring of Hall of Famer Raymond Berry. How do you feel about a guy who's been out of football two and a half years suddenly taking over as head man? Well, let's remember, Raymond Berry is no ordinary coach as he was no ordinary player. I'm sure he'll sit back, being the bright man he is, and observe for the first few weeks. And I think he's in a good position to do that because Lou Erber and Rod Rust are excellent coordinators. So I think he'll take the tack. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, four weeks ago at the Meadowlands, the Patriots defeated the Jets by the score of 28-21, and it was a terrific all-around day for quarterback Tony Eason. Well, Tony Eason has played consistently well since he's been inserted into the opening lineup, and as a matter of fact, in over 150 throws, he's only thrown one interception. Their offense has been outstanding, and now they have a few of their key personnel back and healthy. So it's their defense that is, uh, lends the concern here in Foxborough. And following that particular ball game, the Jets made all kinds of defensive changes for the following week. As it turned out, it turned the club around. Remember, Mark Gastineau had a tough day. Patriots contained him, did not have a sack four weeks ago. Well, and, and that was because Lou Erber found out how to contain him. Whenever you have a great player, one that dominates a game like number 99 does, you must put two and three players on him. They better find another way to handle the switches that the Jets have inserted in the last couple weeks. And last week at Giants Stadium, another standout day for this man, Mark Gastineau, as the Jets beat Kansas City 28-7 in their most convincing all-around <laughs> performance, the most complete game of the season for the Jets. Raymond Berry getting set to make his NFL head coaching debut. The Patriots won the toss. They will receive... And they will go from left to right from our broadcast location. So Pat Leahy getting set to kick off. The key man on the kickoff return is third-round draft pick out of Penn State, the rookie John Williams. And this has been one of the weaknesses of the New England game, kickoff and punt returns. This is Williams. And he is run out by Ken Troy, the Jet special teams have been excellent throughout the year. Tony Eason leading his club on Mosi Tatupu. Opening up and running back in the I-back formation. Eric Ramsey, Stanley Morgan, Stephen Starring, Lynn Dawson. Outstanding group of receivers. And last time out, you recall Eason going to 10 different receivers against the Jets. Guy Morris replacing the injured John Hanna out with a neck injury. First down at the 19-yard line. And Tatupu on the play. Lance Bell, the outside linebacker, coming up to make the stop. The one rookie up front, Ron Perot, in the realigned jet defensive unit. Gastineau, Klecko, Bennett, and Perot. The linebackers back intact. Not the case four weeks ago when these two clubs met. In fact, uh, Bell was injured in that ball game, and Crable, not quite ready, was on the right side. Russell Carter, the lone rookie, in the secondary. Second down for Eason. And it's a first down for Stanley Morgan. Johnny Lynn on the coverage, a 26-yard pass play. Marv, I think <laughs> they picked up right where they left off a few weeks ago at the Meadowlands, this kind of pass protection will give any quarterback enough time to find an alternate receiver. Stanley Morgan is a deep threat, of course. He's the man that's had two 100-yard-plus games in a row. When they give enough time to Eason, you'll see number 76 in the program a lot. And this is Guy Morris, who's replacing John Hanna. He has no problem with Barry Bennett, pushes him right past Eason, and they've got a first and 10. First down from the 45, and to Tupo. Hit for the loss, Mark Gastineau. Mark Gastineau. On the stop, Mosi Tatupu, who is averaging four yards per pop. He had 90 yards against Miami in the loss last week. Tony Eason, John, involved in a shootout with Dan Marino, although the Dolphins ripped up the Patriots and ran away in the second half. Uh, another solid game for Eason, 19 for 29, 313 yards. As we watch Joe Klecko, who's coming off, he's had a bad shoulder and it looks as if the shoulder is still hurting him. 
When you grab the wrist, it's generally because there's a problem with your shoulder. And I do think that's been a that's been a problem with his play and certainly his physical condition. Here's Joe, number 73 on the left, trying to slide in and help. Doesn't take much of a bump sometimes. Looks like uh, Gastineau got him. So a second and 11. And Craig James now below defect. Deflected. Pass intended for the tight end, Lynn Dawson. You know, Tony Eason has had quite a bit of time early in the ball game. That ball was was knocked down by a, by a lineman, but he didn't get an awful lot of penetration. And if you want an illustration as to how they handle a Mark Gastineau with a penalty down on the field, they do it with two or three blockers. And it's, uh, it's no secret. It just should al allow a few other defensive linemen to get a little closer to number 11. Referee Chuck Heberling with the call. Number 40, offense. It's refused. Third down. Motion called on number 40. Greg Hawthorne, number 99, everybody's favorite, unless you happen to be an offensive lineman. That's Lynn Dawson who took a shot at him first from the tight end position. Haley standing back to pick up the slack, and 99's on the turf. So Ben Rudolph is in, along with Tom Baldwin, up front on the spur down at 11. Stephen Stone. His whole progress stopped at the 49. That's where it will be marked. Johnny Lynn with a good hit. Well, and Johnny Lynn on the defensive Johnny side Lynn has again. picked up right where Bobby Jackson and Russell Balls Carter. They've got three quarterbacks that can cover man to man. That's rare, and it gives the defense a chance to utilize different sorts of defensive alignments. They've done so. They've used Church four backs, five backs, 21, and six Bobby backs on several eight. passing occasions. When you tackle one on one like that, you. Uh, Relieve the burden. Luke Prestridge punting. And Luke Prestridge on to punt. He had an 89-yard punt last week. Fourth best ever in the NFL. The best was Steve O'Neill of the uh, 69 Jets. This is Kirk Springs calling fair catch. Yeah, yeah. And a penalty flag thrown. A 28-yard punt. I saw Paul Dombrowski arguing with the official, and it looks like Dombrowski, the man involved. The NFL record, a 98-yard punt by Steve O'Neill back in 1969. <laughs> Prestridge replacing the injured Rich Camarillo, who may return within the next couple of weeks. And had a good game last week. Of course, an 89-yard certainly helps the average. We'll pump it up a little. New head coach Raymond Burry checking out the penalty. We have unnecessary roughness, number 47 on the receiving team. And we have number 44 illegally on field on the kicking team. They will offset. It will be fourth down. I think he had a problem with the numbers. Uh, Dombrowski is number 47 for the Patriots. Whatever. It comes back to the line of scrimmage. I think the uh, important thing is that the Pats get another kick at it because that one would have given the Jets the ball on the 22-yard line. Excellent field position, and uh, Prestridge should do better than that. So it will be a do-over for Luke Prestridge, 27-year-old out of Baylor, one-time Denver Bronco. Here's Kirk Springs, the number three man in punt returns in the AFC. Three minutes gone by, first quarter, and not a good kick. But good cover. Spring <laughs> stop at the 25 by Mosi Tatupu, a 30-yard punt, and a six-yard return. Timeout is being called as the Jets go to the offense for the first time this afternoon. When we come back, first down for the Jets across the 25. Freeman McNeil, who sat out last week with the bruised ribs, is back in the lineup. He's the lone deep back. Play action. Johnny Lamb Jones making his return off that broken collarbone injury, wasting no time in getting back into the offense. Well, they just want to make sure he feels comfortable. That's a good way to get him started. A 14-yard pickup as we check out the Jets offensively. 
McNeil and Bobber, Humphrey, starting at wide receiver. We should see Wesley Walker, though. He was out last week with a sprained ankle. And that offensive line that has been so outstanding, McElroy, Waldemar Fields, Alexander, and Powell. A first down picked up by Pat Ryan of the Jets out of the 40. No score, we're early first quarter. Freeman McNeil with a big hole across the 45. Raymond Claiborne, the right quarterback, on the stop. And let's take a look at that New England defensive alignment. Sims, Owens, and Williams are up front. Ken Sims would like to turn it from a rough one against Miami after he had played very well in the previous weeks. Andre Tippett also had a very long day against the Dolphins well, last he week. He gives people long days. And uh, you don't, you, if you see the Jets running an awful lot to their left today, it's probably because Andre Tippett is over on the right. Ernest Gibson, the lone rookie in the secondary for the Patriots. Second and three, Raymond McNeil picking it up, and Sims, Steve Nelson combining on the stuff. And I think you're, the Jets know how pumped up the Pats are, and it's um, natural when you have a team that has to be responsible for their own actions, they're going to come out sky high. The offensive line for the Jets has been getting off on the ball for the past three weeks in perfect coordination. Look at the right side. Their blocks, everybody gets good contact. The runner meets no problem until he gets past the line of scrimmage. They pick up the first down easily, and they're off to a good start. The Jets feel this is their biggest game of the season. Of course it is for the Patriots, what with the coaching change, but the Jets feel they can't lose twice to New England because if they finish with the same record, they would lose out if it's a wild card situation. Here's McNeil going left to the 46-yard line, Claiborne on the tackle. You know Claiborne what you'll see? We've talked about different uh, abilities of offensive linemen. Four now, Reggie McElroy is, is small as offensive tackles go, but he lends, he lends a, a dimension to the, to the offense that a lot of tackles don't. He can pull and has excellent speed. When he gets out in front of a ball carrier, he can actually lead a ball carrier. A few guards can, very few tackles can, but number 68 does it as well as anybody. And following that four-holding penalty game against Pittsburgh very early in the season, McElroy has been solid. Second down and six. Lots of time, and then Ryan is hit. But a flag throw. Pat Ryan looking it over. Couldn't find anyone and was brought down. And it looks as though it's holding. And it generally is when the flag is thrown back there by the quarterback if it's not roughing the passer. And they certainly didn't rough him. Holding, Holding. Offense. offense, number 68, declined, third down. Plenty of pass coverage, Marv, but plenty of time All to throw the, the ball. Could not find a receiver Garrett down the field. The Mickey Schuler, 82, coming underneath Steve Nelson. <laughs> He's got his man covered like a blanket. That's why the quarterback has to put salt on it once in a while. And just wow. as I mentioned, that Reggie McElroy had not had a hold since the Pittsburgh game. Number 68, McElroy was called. So it's a third down and 12, although that penalty was declined. Big rush. Ryan getting it away. Hector surprised and short of the first down. Nice catch by Johnny Hector. But he's short with Larry McGrew on the stop. You know... If you, if you contain the quarterback and they can't get outside when they're intending to run a rollout, they need some time to throw. Now, number 77, Sims, pre pressures Ryan, and you can see down the field, nobody's really in a spot ready to make a reception at this point, so he's got to lay it off to Hector, way short of the first. Funny situation for the first time for Chuck Ramsey, who has been superb, particularly the last four weeks. This is Roland James back at his 10-yard line. Gets it, Patriots, no score. Five and a half gone by, first quarter. Good hang time. And James with the fair catch. Fans responding, they felt there was contact made. But no flag. Well, they, they must have ruled the defender was pushed into the, into the receiver. We'll get another look at it. A 34-yard punt by Ramsey. Bernanza Burgess, the terrific special teams player, 
making contact, but uh, as you say, perhaps uh, the feeling that he was pushed in to James, so no call made. Russ, the Patriots allow the third fewest points in the NFL. He's been highly regarded, but last week, Patriots gave up 552 yards to Miami. The shocker during the course of the week, Ron Meyer fires Rod Russ. Next day, Meyer fired by Pat Sullivan, the general manager of the club. Russ is back. Raymond Burry, the new head coach. Jose Takupu. Good second effort. Picked up four. Johnny Lynn on the start. Well, look, he made five yards, but he made it on his own, and Whenever you find an offensive line that isn't getting the sort of movement that you'd like, and right now the Patriots are not against the Jet defense, uh, they, you, you, you depend on your backs to pick it up. Crable, who's been playing middle linebacker the last few weeks, whose play has come on and on and on. He was a little suspect at the outside after his knee injury, but here he takes on the blocker, finds a way to get back in the play, and he does lay the living. Second down, about five. Patriots from their 15. Number 74, the rookie Ron Perot on the tackle. And you know, we've talked about the tackle play of the Jets improving in the last two or three weeks. Barry Bennett, Marty Lyons, when he got hurt, it's everybody started picking up on the act. Now, I think Gastineau's had a lot to do with it because they have to put a lot of attention on him. But as Eason goes back, it looks like he's going to have plenty of time. None of his receivers are open. Perot gets in his face and pulls him down. And that is the first sack in the NFL for the rookie from Arkansas, the Jets' second pick on the first round, Ron Perot, who was muscled away from the ball, you recall, last week in the end zone when he and Gastineau were looking for that, <laughs> that fumble recovery. Third down and nine. Stephen Starry. Way short of the first down. There's Joe Klecko headed to the dressing room. Fourth down. Shaken up. Earlier this first quarter, the word is he is expected back. Did not suffer a serious injury. Well, I know they get very sore, and once you have a sore shoulder like he's had, he's been playing with it week in and week out. It certainly isn't going to get any better until he rests it, but he just hates to take a week off when it's as important as this game is. It has been a rough injury hit season for Joe Flecko. Luke Prestwitz punting for the second time in the ball game. Kicked for only 30 yards, his first attempt. That's Kirk Springs out of the 45-yard line. Springs. And turned back by Dombrowski. Paul Dombrowski, fifth year out of Linfield College in Oregon. Getting to Springs, 40-yard punt. A five-yard return. 7-21 left in the first quarter. The Jets and the Patriots. No score. Out to the right, second down at eight. And it's Jones picking up the first down. And a penalty marker has been thrown. Nelson on the coverage, so Lab Jones making his presence felt. However, it's going back, a holding penalty against the Jets. And the funny thing is, Mark, uh, the Jets on second and eight, second and nine, are typically a running football team. They do so because their philosophy is to get it to third and two, third and three, where they've had an exceptional percentage of picking up the first down. Number 79, second down. Marvin Powell caught on the hold, and for the first time this season, Joe Walton has the luxury of going with both Lamb Jones and Wesley Walker, who was well, on the field. Well, Rich Cotite mentioned to me, he said, you know, the funny thing about Jones, he doesn't really, I don't think he's been out of the action, although he hasn't played in the games. He gets to practice, his, his conditioning is good, and now that he's been given a free slate, we're going to use him a lot, and I think they're wise in doing so. That's Walker in motion. Second out, 18. Look out. A terrific rush. Led by the combination of Don Blackman and Julius Adams. And a penalty marker down. It's against the New England, the face mask indicated. 85, Julius Adams, the NFL's oldest active defensive lineman at age 
46. Well, it's generally somebody else who sets it up, and Don Blackman was in there first. And Chuck Kepperling with his crew today, indicating the face mask on Julius Adams. I think the impressive thing, the impressive thing is the way the the Patriots have been able to put pressure on Ryan. Something they haven't done consistently throughout the year. They, they did have a good one four weeks ago at Giants Stadium. Six sacks of Ryan. What was it, 47? Check of the scoreboard, Chicago leading Minnesota. Matt Suey, two-yard run. However, the extra point was missed. Bears six. And Minnesota nothing, first quarter. I think you'll see that that expression uh, for several years. Raymond Berry, if anything, is a very consistent. I'd say he is obviously emotional, but he's not very expressive. And uh, I think his players will react to him in a very positive way. And I know he's right. He was Johnny Unitas' favorite receiver. Grew up in Texas, son of a football coach. And, and John knows just how lucky he was to have Raymond. I mean, they really started and changed the whole game. Second down and 17. The Jets from their 47. Six and a half left, first quarter. Schuler peeling off. Ryan going sideline. Beautiful catch by Jones, who was spun around by the left corner, Ernest Gibson. Ernest Gibson on the stop. They've had a little bit of problem out at that out at that left corner. They've alternated Lippitt and Gibson, and I think you'll see some of that today, but quarterbacks just continue to go away from Ray Claiborne, and I think it's a sound, a sound thought. When you have a one-on-one -on -one situation, which this defense lends itself vulnerable to, you're going to hit it. Gibson is the rookie from Furman. Nine-yard gain for Jones. Third down and nine. And the crowd into it, urging the defense on. And it's a first down picked up by Pat Ryan. Ryan How, sweet the bullet. How sweet it is, Mark. Jones. Jones didn't catch this many balls his whole first year, I don't believe. Uh, Gibson on the stop. I can recall watching him come in as a first draft choice and a great talent and it seems like just now and rich kotai said wait till you see him come back uh he is an accomplished receiver now and i think he's complete and it'll give us a chance to have two fellas that can run nine five down the field on either side so far uh, i'm impressed fans reacting when julius adams went off they wanted to see uh, adams on the field johnny lamb did come on strong many questions about him when he was Drafted as that first down draft pick. Again, the go to the razzle dazzle. The pass intended for the tight end, Mickey Schuler. And that's the first time we've seen Schuler go deep. Well, he went to, on a play flicker. What you're trying to do is is get reaction from the strong safety and weak safety. He did not get the, the, the hoped for reaction. And Schuler is never really open. Nelson, Nelson forces him to hurry the throw a little, but there's no play there. How do you feel about coming back with a, a flea flicker? Obviously, the Patriots took a long look at last week's, and here are the Jets yeah. early it's, in the game. Going it's again. a different type. Last week, they were trying to beat the corner. This week, they're trying to beat the safety. But Joe Walton continues to go the chicanery route, and you have to like that. I do. Second and 10 from the 34. Ryan goes the middle, and it's broken up. Intended for the rookie tight end, Glenn Dennison. Pat Ryan got an awful good lick back there by Larry McGrew. Just as he threw the ball, there was no penalty thrown, but there's a man that's been so tough. He's taking his lumps every week. He hangs in there so tough. This time he may have been just a little overmatched. Larry McGrew, a linebacker, number 50. Excellent player out of USC. He's coming. Baltimore gives him a, a wide open shot just as Ryan gets rid of the ball. Helmet against helmet. Mm. Not a late hit, just a hard one. Pat Ryan has taken 
some hard hits throughout the season, and it has been a brilliant start for this seventh-year quarterback. Now, Ken O'Brien, who threw his first pass to the scrimmage in a wrap-up role last week against Kansas City, warming up on the sideline. Timeout has been called. Thoroughbred Racing, $10 million a day, is coming to NBC Sports, the Breeders' Cup. So this is the first serious play for Ken O'Brien, who appeared briefly in two games this year, did not play at all from scrimmage last season. Johnny Hector inside the 30. Steve yeah, Nelson, no. inside linebacker on the start. And they are going with the wind, and they have an excellent chance for a field goal. Six yards was all they needed to put the ball within a 47-yard field goal range. Steve and they got it. Defensively for the Patriots. Fourth down to Here five. is Pat Leahy, who did ball not have a field goal opportunity last week against Kansas City. 46-yard attempt field upcoming. Attempt. Chuck Ramsey will hold. Leahy overall 9 for 11 on the season, including a team record 52-yarder. He has hit 9 of his last 10. From 46 yards away, Leahy converting for the three points. And the Jets lead the Patriots by the score of 3 nothing with 4 minutes left, first quarter. Walter Payton going up against Marcus Allen next Sunday on NBC. It should be a day to remember. The three-pointer in that drive. Pat Ryan now trying to warm up. He took, you know, it was the last shot that kind of pushed him over the hill. But Steve Nelson had hit him on the previous play, two in a row. And, boy, they were right in the jaw. He's back throwing, but I don't see any smiles. No. Pat, I would think, suffering with a, uh, a strong headache. Good kick by Leahy, and John Williams has to stay right there. So Pat That's Leahy, ball, aside from yard line, first and ten the, for the proficient field goal kicking this year, has really been driving the kickoffs. And the Patriots now will start out from their 20. Here's Tony Easton coming on. Philadelphia Eagles over the St. Louis Cardinals, 7 nothing in the second quarter. Houston looking for its first win in front of Cincinnati, 7-zip. And the first, Green Bay in front of Detroit, 14 up in, in the first quarter. Green Bay Packers going in at 1 up and 7 down. The swing by Houston, Derek Ramsey, the so-called each back here. Derek Ramsey on much the damage to the Jets in the Easton. earlier meeting this season. And in their previous meeting, the they had so Greg much Bottle. success throwing the balls quickly and yeah, when they did throw the ball downfield it was a drop back where Easton took off either on a sprint out after he dropped back or it was a short zone pass uh, throwing the ball down the field has not been their fort uh, and I think you'll see them throw it a little bit shorter Easton is now four for five 43 yards second down three O.C. Tafuku Mark Costano on the stop. Correction, Tony Collins carrying the ball Great for the first the time the and picks up the first down. Tony Collins has a 212-yard game against the Jets last year in Foxborough that set a first team record. Four, and he'll have more seven, of them, too, Marv, if he gets these kind of blocks. Pete Brock, the offensive four, center, has a slip block on Crable, the linebacker, six. takes him right nine, clean out of the play and allows him to pick up the first down. Collins not a happy guy no, earlier this year and had some strong no, comments in regard to the use of one back, the eye back formation, thought he wasn't getting the playing time. Some improvisation by Eason. Greg Buttle nearly picked off the pass intended for Lynn Dawson. Well, this is a play where the quarterback finds himself in a very Second fortunate position on a few three, occasions five, and sometimes the man's so open that you lock your arm up and you can't it's like leads in there this time he's got dawson clearly behind buttle way behind him he underthrows the ball and instead of it being a 40 or 50 yard play it's almost an interception dawson did good good just to keep him from uh, picking it off well joe klecko back from the locker room and getting set to make his return he was shaken up earlier Second down and 10 from the 31. Tony Collins. And up to Tony Collins. Handled well by the Jets. Brought down by Harry Bennett, Bennett. Veteran out of Concordia. No game on the play. tackle, no gain for Collins. It'll be a third and 10. From Tom Baldwin, who had his first real go at some action last week and was very impressive. 
Here he's on a one-on-one -on -one situation. Wooden's having uh, a little problem getting any penetration. That's what you call a standoff. Tom Baldwin who caused Bill Kenny to fumble, leading to that recovery for the touchdown by Mark Gastineau. It is a third and ten. Gastineau, Bennett, Baldwin, and Rudolph now up front for the Jets. And Eason incomplete. Intended for Morgan. It was, but Morgan didn't know it. That's what you call a miscommunication. Of course, it's a punting situation. And both the Jets and the Patriots have been effective defensively. I think this is somewhat of a surprise. Now you'll see Mark. He's standing on the right side. You'll notice in the last few weeks, this is a one-on-one. -on -one. When he's against number 76, Brian Holloway, they're very likely not to give Brian any help at all. And then you'll really see a matchup. Brian got the best of that one. And Luke Presbridge back at his 15. His third part of the day, Kirk Springs awaits it. Down at the 30-yard uh, line. Here's Springs. Picking his way. And it took a shot as he crossed <laughs> the 40. It's Paul Dombrowski once again on the coverage. A 39-yard punt and a 12-yard return. Paul Dombrowski. So it's the Jets leading for the New England Wiglet. Patriots by the score of 3-0. We'll be play. right back. And Freeman McNeil making it back after sitting out last week because of the injured ribs. Ken O'Brien remaining in at quarterback. Pat Ryan, who took a shot to the jaw during the course of the last series, although O'Brien came out and with the handoff to Hector, able to put it into position for the 46-yard field goal by Leahy. And McNeil hit for the loss. Don Blackman, number 55. All the stuff. We're set for an update. Let's go to our studios in New York. All right, Marv, down in Houston, the Oilers have scored. Hersey Walls out of Texas had caught only two passes this year, but he's a splendid open field runner. And on this pass from Warren Moon, breaks one, setting up a one-yard touchdown run by Larry Moriarty. And something that hasn't happened very often is going on in the Astrodome. The Oilers lead at 7-0. <laughs> That's... You know, Bill Walsh said last week that he thought the New Orleans would win half their remaining games, and I think he surprised everybody that heard it. Well, he was kind after uh, his outing against Houston. Here's McNeil putting away. Setting the block and hit out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Ray Claiborne just did get a piece of him, so McNeil, who was stopped back behind the line of the previous play able to explode well you know it's it's what happens when you're trying to cover a Wesley Walker too. the cornerback turned his back just ran right down the field with Wesley that means when Freeman got to the line of scrimmage there was no containment here Sanford trying to catch him but he's got no case at all now watch Wesley Walker's all the way down the field with Raymond Claiborne Claiborne just found out that McNeil had the ball just a beautiful play and Reggie Mc, Reggie McElroy made the key block and Freeman McNeil at the moment has taken over the uh, rushing leadership. Here's Johnny Hector. And he was pinned by Roland James. The 53-yard run by McNeil setting up the second down and goal now following the run by Hector. 38, Roland James, who sat out the previous meeting against the Jets with a back injury. In fact, he's been hospitalized because of a virus. Statistician Danny Green pointing out the 53 yards, the longest run of the NFL career of Fred McNeil. Time running down to this first quarter, 10 seconds left. Jets with a 3 0 lead. Second and goal from the seventh. O'Brien for his first NFL touchdown. Lucky Cleaver catching his first NFL touchdown. There was no indecision on O'Brien's part. When he rolled out, he looked back, he saw Cleaver, and this is the advantage of having an arm like he does. Watch how fast from the time he sees the play and sees Cleaver open to when it's gone. Bang. Boop. Takes no time getting there. Six points for the Jets, and that's a wonderful way to start if you're a young second-year man that's uh, had a thus far very difficult time. And a wonderful situation for the Jeff roommate Ramsey combination of Rocky Cleaver and uh, Ken O'Brien as Pat Leahy gets set 
to attempt the extra point of the Jets up by the score of 9-0. King is good. Well, and many people thought the that the Patriots the would come out revved up, particularly the, the defense, what with the Rod Rust situation. But here we are, end of the first quarter, with the Jets in front of New England by the score of 10-0. And Globe, a uh, very nice likeness of you. They can catch. <laughs> There's John Brody in the right hand corner of the broadcast booth. Mm -hmm. Yes, the firing of Ron Meyer, the subject of much discussion and much media play these last couple of days here in the New England area. 10 0 Jets on top. John Williams, the rookie from Penn State, on the return. The 25-yard line, a 17-yard return. And uh, there are Those many matters relating the to the Meyer firing First throughout the Sullivan Patriots Stadium. Offense, and the weird part of that one is that, you know, remember, this team is 5-3. and three. Now, uh, they seem to be very difficult to satisfy up here in New England, but... Uh, well, so much has been expected, particularly going into this season, where uh, not that this season is is over when you're five and three anything can happen with this new england club and they did lose only to miami twice and to the washington redskins but uh, the play has not been what has been expected on the other hand there have been many injuries to key people and a first down picked up by second sterling Rick Puddle on the stop flag has been thrown this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New England Patriots and the National Football League is prohibited. Penalty against the Jets. Defense, five yards added on, first down. Darrell Ray on the face mask. So Stephen Starring on his third reception. Well, Starring that time was the was the secondary receiver. The whole defense was was split way back. He got a pretty good lick. When you do catch the ball, it does draw a crowd. First down from midfield. Short setup for Eason. To the tight end, Lynn Dawson. Buttle on the stop Lynn along with Lynn. And the Patriots on the move off this drive. The Bears on the move, leading Minnesota 13-0 in the second quarter. St. Louis and Philadelphia now tied at seven. All the scores and the highlights, the latest from around the NFL coming up at halftime on NFL 84. Marv Albert, John Brody from Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough. Opening minute, second quarter, Jets 10, the Patriots nothing. Second down and three for Eason. Big rush. Eason running for the first down. That, that's just something you, you love to have and love to see in a quarterback, the ability to make a no play into a first down. But his offensive line has got to give him a little more time to get his receivers downfield into the secondary. Uh, if he doesn't have a little more time, he's going to be makeshift all afternoon. You see his offensive line, they're being pushed back right into where he wants to step up and throw. Now, fortunately, he gets out and around Gastineau and picks up the first down, but that's, that's one play. Later word on Joe Klecko, badly bruised elbow, will not play the rest of this half. He may make his return. Tom Tupu for the short pickup, Bob Crable, Greg Puddle. Combining on the stop. You know what I get the feeling we're seeing is a Jet team Bob that knows Crable, how important Crable, this game is. They know coming into Foxborough, they're they're sitting up against a team who actually got to choose their coach, and now they know they're responsible for for coming out. So they knew they'd be fired up, and it seems to have a very positive effect on the Jets because I think they're playing as solidly and as aggressively as I've seen them early all year. Second and seven at the 35. It's Gastineau, Bennett, Baldwin, and Rudolph up front. Again, the tight end, Lynn Dawson. And a first down for New England. What a good play by Tony. 
He's trying to go down the field to Stanley, Stanley Morgan. He's got pretty good pass protection, but as you, as you notice, first down, perfect time for a play-action pass. He gets good penetration from Gastineau, which makes him step up. He's smart and fast enough to come off to his secondary receiver, Dawson, and they pick up another first. And the first down of the Jet 25-yard line. Passes complete. On the reception, a very Derek short Ramsey. pickup. Stopped by On Johnny Lynn. Johnny Lynn. Those short ones kind of take away <laughs> the determination of most defensive ends. You see Gastineau, he's got two people on him. Hurries he's in some. When blue, you only take three steps elbow. before you throw it, it's kind of hard Game to get a sack. <laughs> a little frustration. But he will keep coming from both the right and left side. <laughs> Leads the NFL 13 and a half sacks. Easton is 8 for 11, 81 yards. They just marked the season taking Back over nine, for Trogan against Seattle and bringing the Patriots from behind to win. Yeah, nice pass. And another first down. Stanley Morgan setting up the first and goal. Such, you know, that they've talked about different quarterbacks and the abilities they have. Timing is so first important. Down, and a fellow with the arm like like Easton has which is not exceptionally strong but he's got exceptional timing now when Morgan is down here he has not made his cut this ball is on the way this is good coverage by Lynn but the ball is right where it has to be thrown they pick up a first down and Easton's just done everything they've asked him to do since he's been playing 17 yard pickup on the pass play and it is a first and goal at the seven Jets 10 Patriots nothing Straight ahead by Tatupu. Bob Crable, the middle that linebacker. Will be by Bob Crable. On the stop. Tatupu picks up. You notice he makes a lot of plays at the line of scrimmage. Stops a lot of plays for no gain. That means the linebacker knows where his keys are, makes his moves at the snap of the ball, and is in the proper position. I think Crable is as good a, mi a middle linebacker right now. There aren't a lot of teams that play the four man line as there is. Crable flanked by Buttle and Bell. Second and goal at the six. Eason lofting it. Stephen starring the intended receiver. Boy, would Tony like to have that ball back. He had Brock out in front of him, Wooden out in front of him, and nobody in between him and the goal line. Take a look. It's a little play-action pass. He didn't expect to fool everybody, but he did. Now he'd have to yell to Wooden to get going down the field. He forgot to do that. Tries to make a great throw to Starring, but no chance. It is a third and goal at the six. Four minutes gone by, second quarter. 46-yard field goal by Leahy. And O'Brien and the tight end Cleveland on a seven-yard touchdown pass. down also the ball is placed right outside the goal line and the call is against New England well so it's, it's immaterial but trying to get the feet in the end zone really doesn't get it you've got to get the ball in I thought it was a close call let's see at home whether it was a right call Tony's trying to find anybody, has to come off to a delay man, steps right up, shot puts him the ball. You, you see if the ball gets over the line. Two men moving on the offense. Third down. Did not look like it. Tough Very from close. that angle, but <laughs> close. whatever. It is off the flag. It is brought to the 11-yard line. Third and goal from the 11. Helpless feeling by the wide receiver Stanley Morgan as he pedaled <laughs> into the end zone. And a good play by Darrell Ray.
it's an overthrowing intended for Derek Ramsey. But a flag thrown. Roughness, too, Mark. Now, that's the sort of play that a team is trying to get in and make a big play sometimes gets a little overexcited, a little over anxious. And it gives the Patriots a wonderful opportunity now. Legendary rushes, number 78. First down. Barry Bennett called on the unnecessary roughing. Well, he's been hurried all day long. He's had to come off short, the secondary, third receivers. Here, you can see Bennett's got a hold of him. We cannot see in the replay, but uh, evidently he was a little rough after he had him. Barry Bennett, who has replaced the injured Marty Lyons, who is out with a bad ankle. And it's a third goal. Make it a uh, first and goal. Ball placed at the five. Tony Collins twisting his way for a couple. You know, we haven't mentioned the vacancy that John Hanna has left. You know how their tendency has always been to run to the left side over Hanna and Brian Holloway. Well, John Hanna's condition, it's stated, is not as serious as was feared, but it certainly isn't good enough to allow him to play today, and their, their tendency to run 80% to the left could change. Bo Robinson, Tony Collins now in the backfield. Play action. He threw into a crowd. Well, he threw into a crowd because he ran into a crowd as soon as he made the fake handoff. He had very little time to set up or throw. We've noticed, we've noted that he's getting good pressure, but this is a little beyond the call. He's trying to get down the field a little bit. Now he slips as he throws. Oof. He's lucky they get the ball back. Nearly picked off. Pass intended for Bo Robinson. This is the 12th play of the drive upcoming. A third and goal at the three. He's throwing it away. Couldn't find anyone. Derek Ramsey was Derek he had nowhere to go with the ball, Marv. He's trying. He's got Lynn Dawson in motion. He's coming out hoping he can get one of his two tight end receivers open. Dawson in motion. Ramsey coming. He's picked up as soon as he gets off the line of scrimmage by Russell Carter. There's nowhere to go. Got to settle for the three. So a long drive coming down to Tony Franklin, who will attempt from 20 yards away. Franklin, six for nine on the season. He's hit his last four. He did miss two against the Jets earlier this season. And he puts it through. The Patriots on the board. But not a satisfying drive. Maintaining possession throughout the second quarter, and they have to settle for three with 9.50 left first half. There's the... Tony Franklin, who just hit from 20 yards away to give the uh, Patriots their first point of the day off a long drive, a 13-play drive. Now kicking off to the top kickoff return team in the NFL, Kirk Springs, out to the 20. taken out by Kirk Springs. And a good return. Marv, you know what the, what the, 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 the kickoff team does so well? They take... They take their players before they get to the 20-yard line and really just never let them get beyond it. When you're a returner, you need a little room to make movement. They get it, and that's why their special teams are so good. With Pat Ryan taking that shot to the jaw earlier, Ken O'Brien remains in at quarterback, a man who has taken a few shots to the jaw in the head area, John Brody. What is uh, Pat thinking about right now? Well, I think right now... Uh, He's had a lot of his desire taken out of him. We'll find out at halftime whether or not he has a concussion, and I think that if he does, he won't play. And uh, if O'Brien continues to play well, that's another Freeman reason he McNeil. may not see any more action today. Freeman McNeil with the uh, short pickup on the first down play. Set for another update. Let's return to NFL 84. 
All right, Marvin, John, in Irving, Texas, after a scoreless first quarter, the Cowboys have taken the lead against the Colts. Danny White back at starting quarterback to Tony Hill, who is healthy once again. The touchdown covered 38 yards. First touchdown of the year for number 80, and it's 7-0 Dallas. Thank you, Bill. Marv Albert, John Brody from Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough. Jets lead it 10 to 3. Second down, six, and O'Brien airing it out for Lamb Jones, who has had a spectacular first half. A first down for the Jets at midfield. Hey, I've noticed that the play calling has been excellent for the Jets. When they've put a when they've called a pass play, and remember this is sent in from the bench, Walton and upstairs, they've created a situation that was one-on-one -on -one for Jones on each occasion. Well, if you get what you're looking for, it's just a game of pitch and catch. O'Brien does that pretty well. Midfield. And O'Brien, who was tabbed as the starter before preseason by this man, head coach Joe Walton, but then involved in the court case proceedings, the famous Studio 54 case, along with Mark Gaston. O'Brien lost all the start uh, practice time, and Pat Ryan became the starter. Freeman McNeil. Yeah, but let's give Lamb Jones credit for that one, too. He came back and just took on all the pursuit, allowed McNeil to run down the field for an extra 25 yards. Now, this is a little layoff pattern to a halfback. They use this little check flare pattern. Instead of blocking, he just slides out late. Now, look at that play by Jones. He comes back on a strong safety, handles him. Roland James has to come over from a long way off. And Tippett was not in the pursuit since he was trying to get to O'Brien. And it's a first down at the 22-yard line in New England territory. Eight minutes left, first half. That's Schuler in motion. Johnny Hector finding the hole. That's out of the 10. Roland James on the defensive side. Tell you what, when you when you throw the ball down the field, throw a right little down. check off, yeah. and then run the ball over left tackle, you'd have to say your offense can do about what it wants. Donnie Hector made his Patriots. first NFL start last week and has filled in very well with Freeman McNeil hurting with a nice run. And it sets up a first and goal at the 10. Hector stopped by Rick Sanford. Rick Sanford defensively. When you see those defensive backs making the stops, you know your offensive line is, is doing Second their down. job. Marvin Four. Powell, Waldemore, Fields, Alexander, those guys are <laughs> they are creating some spaces. And it's a second and goal at the four. four. Hector, four carries, 23 yards. Second round draft pick last year out of Texas AM. Freeman McNeil is back in. And this is McNeil. Good coverage by the Patriots as McNeil tried to go wide. Don Blackman, the outside linebacker, cut him off. Just good pursuit. Very difficult to run wide when you get close to the goal line. Those defensive backs are up on the goal line in a good position to come up and make the play. Now it's a tough decision. Third down and four on the four. It's about as hard a call as there is in the game, and very seldom do you see, see a team run it in from here. Humphrey to the left, and Jones right. Much time intended for Jones. They have a... Sims did not get off the field in time. That penalty is going against the Patriots. Too many people on the field. Jets was... Well, I don't know... I don't know what the jet problem was, but I do know the Patriots. Now, if they took too much time and they still couldn't get off the field, <laughs> we do have a problem. The call of delay of game against the Jets. 12th man on the field, on the play. Third down. And also, as you said, Sims did not get off in time. I knew about that part. <laughs> So it is a third and goal the at the two. The Jets tap the Patriots three, 6.06 left. And 
this first half from Foxborough, Massachusetts. The Jets at six and two, the Patriots coming in at five up, three down. Beautiful defensive play by the Patriots to stop Johnny Hector. Hey, that line judge is gonna make you get that ball all the way over that goal line. Very close. Now take a look to the right side of your screen. Nobody penetrates the line of scrimmage. Looks like this ball will go in easy. Andre Tippett says, no thank you, Johnny Hector. Pushes him back, does not let him get in. It'll be fourth down in about a yard and a half. And Pat Leahy will come on to attempt the field goal. So the Jets going for the three. Good point at this stage in the game. They're one touchdown up. Anytime you can extend that, you must. Getting one yard in that part of the football field is very difficult. It's an 18-yard attempt. Leahy hit from 46 earlier. And connects it right here. As they come back up the field with line 41 left. So with five minutes, 41 seconds left, first half, the Jets extend to a 13-3 lead over New England. Combination of Pat Ryan and Ken O'Brien leading the Jets to a 13-3 lead over the New England Patriots. It has been a week of turmoil for these Patriots. Firing of Coach Ron Meyer. New head coach Raymond Berry seeing his club fall behind. This is John Williams. Williams takes it out. Out across the 25-yard line, Rusty Gilbo on the stop, a 21-yard kickoff return. Five and a half left in this first half. A couple of field goals by Leahy, O'Brien to Cleaver for a touchdown, and a field goal by Frank. Throughout the season, particularly the last four weeks when the Jets have taken off, they have been an excellent club in first down situations. And they haven't been too bad today. <laughs> Patriots longest run from scrimmage to this point, five yards. First down of the 26-yard line. The Jets up 13-3. Barry Bennett and Greg Buttle Barry on, the, on stop. the stop. Collins just short of the first Eight down. The Recall the last down meeting down between two. these two clubs. Well, oh, that was back September four. 30th. And look at the uh, starting defensive alignment back then and now. Joe Walton and defensive coordinator Joe Gardy shaking up the defense, making eight starting changes and many others in the situational substitution. And I think giving credit to the coaching staff and this team, it hasn't changed their play. Second down and two. Issa going deep. Picked off by the rookie, Russell Carter. Russell Carter. So Russell Carter came up with his first NFL interception last week against Kansas City. Caught the deflection off the hands of Stephen Starring and intercepting a man who has been proficient in that area. Tony Eason intercepted for only the second time this season. Well, let's take a look at the difference, though. Last week he made a play that he, where he looked like the offensive receiver. This time he is clearly beaten badly, and it looks like a very big play for the Patriots. Carter, at least being very opportunistic, picks off a deflected ball, runs it all the way down to the 42-yard line, and the Jets, who have a 10-point lead, have an excellent chance to extend it. So the Jets taking over, and O'Brien again connects with Jones. Lamb Jones, who took a pretty good rip. It's so, it's so impressive to note that Lamb Jones has caught five balls in this half, and having not played throughout the whole of the season, he comes on like he's at the end of the season or mid-season form easily. And again, they call the right play at the right time. Jones one-on-one. -on -one. Ernest Gibson is not foolish enough to get up close to him, so it's an easy completion. And here's Ken O'Brien, who's four for four, 67 yards. And remember how shaky O'Brien looked during preseason. In fact, all kinds of criticism. He held the ball too long, the inexperience. He did come out of that final preseason game against the Raiders, but he has been sharp here this afternoon. But that time, not the case. He hit, his, hit the lineman, Reggie McElroy. That's his first incompletion in the National Football League. Right, he was one for one last week. 
Dallas in front of Indianapolis, 7 0. Danny White to Tony Hill on a 38 yard touchdown pass play. Chicago leading Minnesota in the second quarter. Pittsburgh in front of Atlanta. So Pittsburgh looking to go over the uh, 500 mark. And now St. Louis leading Philadelphia. All the scores and highlights. NFL 84 coming up at halftime. Again, the dazzling move by Johnny Hector for a first down for the Jets. Excellent piece of running, but very bad Four defensive play. Two players had a clean shot at him. Barely touched his uniform. Look at the movement at the line of scrimmage again. Reggie McElroy pulling, knocking the linebacker out at the point of attack. Hey, the Jets are doing it all right now. 15-yard run for the very elusive Johnny Hector. He earned the game ball in Cleveland two weeks ago and filling in for Freeman McNeil. Running for 97 yards. Jets first down at the New England 13. The we've mentioned the offensive line is playing well. That's about as simple a play as you can possibly draw up. And yet McGrew, the linebacker number 50, Nelson number 57, both of them sitting back behind the line of scrimmage. Watch the offensive line get off on the ball. Now Dan Alexander handles handles Nelson easily, pushes him six yards off the line of scrimmage. Pretty easy for a running back to pick up yardage under those conditions. Steve Nelson, 33 years old, out of North Dakota State, leads New England in tackles. Second down and five. Flag throw. A lot of them. <laughs> Throwing in zone. Incomplete. Incomplete. Penalty markers are down the play. And the markers all over the field. Receiver. Glenn Dennison. Good rush by Andre Tippett. I think we can look for a multiple penalty. They've got three of them 30 yards apart. 56, defense, offside at the snap. That was Tippett. 79, offense, holding. Yeah, they will offset, Powell. second down. Larry Johnson of Roxbury, please report the game. Offsetting penalty, so uh, Joe Walton and the Jets please. with a second and uh, eight. Second down and five. You can see Tippett gets a little bit of a head start. I don't think we'll be able to see Marvin Powell do his grabbing act. But it's a good break for the Jets again. Second down and five. And it is Barry and Barber carrying for the first time today. Last week against Kansas City came on strong late in the game. Yeah, I'll tell you, everybody's going to come on strong if you're at your offensive interior line moves people off the line of scrimmage the way these fellas have. You'll notice another five yards down inside the 10. It's hard to make unless you're just running people off the line. First down. And a first down picked up goal by goal the Jets. The two. First and goal from the two. Pat Ryan looking on. Took a shot to the jaw in the first quarter. So Ken O'Brien, a number one draft pick out of California Davis last year, has taken over and has played very well. Now Tony Page in the backfield for the first time. Page alongside Johnny Hector. Both teams have three timeouts. And the two-minute warning is provided. So the official timeout with the score, the Jets 13, the Patriots 3. There's a first and goal from the two. Tony Page, who has been the short yardage specialist, stopped at the line by Steve Tony Nelson. Tony Page is the ball carrier. Dennis Owens on the That's tackle. the first time in several plays that the defensive line of the, of the Pats no the has uh, maintained goal. control of the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Maybe we can get him in a uniform. It'll be a second and goal from the two. And here's Bobber working off the hit by Nelson to carry in. Nelson thought he had him. Well, Nelson almost did have him. I don't know. I don't know whether or not Steve Nelson's shoulder has bothered him, but throughout the year he's done this on occasion. Makes excellent contact at the line of scrimmage. Reggie McElroy, number 68, is the key blocker at the point of attack. They get enough penetration. Then you see Nelson come on over, a couple people underneath him. It wasn't actually Nelson who knocked him free. 
Good contact's one thing. You must lock your arm. So many people thought the Patriots, particularly the defensive unit, as we watch uh, Pat Leahy gun for the extra point, so many people felt that the uh, Patriots would come out all revved up, particularly, and that their favorite, Rod Russ, was rehired, and here they are. They're trailing by the score of 20 to 3. I think they did come out revved up, but the Giants, but the Jets did also, and execution will beat enthusiasm any time, and the Jets have executed about as well as a team can throughout the first uh, two quarters. They, they've played the last six quarters about as well as a team can. You're saying so much for emotion. I think the emotion is wonderful, but uh, you know they have to have had their attention a little dispersed this week uh, with all the fall or all that was going on, and you just don't know what effect that's going to play. I don't, I'm not sure that's the reason they're getting beat right now. What is going through the mind of Raymond Berry now? Not a guy, I would think, from what you hear and what you read, who will go into the clubhouse at halftime and... Uh, just go wild with his ball club. What does he do now at halftime? No, I think he walks in the locker room and lets his offensive and defensive coordinator set up whatever they can do to stop the holes and create some offense. Uh, they have moved the ball pretty well. It was that tip ball that looked like a big play that led to that touchdown. They did make a nice drive early in the, in the second quarter that didn't turn out for more than three points. I mean, it's not totally one-sided, but the score is. The interception by Russell Carter leading to this last jet drive. Here's John Williams. Out across the 30-yard line, a good return. Kyle Clifton on the stop. Wow. Coming up at halftime, join us for the AFL Remember on NFL 84. Charlie Jones hosts, and we take a look back at the American Football League's great receivers, Don Maynard, Lance Allworth, and Fred Boletnikoff. Some of those will be featuring and it is certain to bring back some nice memories. The AFL Remember, that's halftime on NFL 84. Minute 16 left, first half, and the Jets lead the Patriots 20 to three, looking to avenge that earlier season defeat. Mason Peggy, Lynn Dawson, who has been a favorite target this afternoon of Tony Eason, stopped by Lance Bell. Check it, Derek Ramsey on the reception. First down for the Patriots. And the hurry up offense. 43. In effect, first out of the 43. Lawrence Weathers. For another first down. Weathers back on the squad. A foot injury kept him out until last week's Miami game. Weathers out of bounds. 17 yard advance. Run out by Russell Carter. You know, you asked me what they're going to say at halftime. I think if they run it in and score six Patriots. points, Raymond Berry may, in his infinite wisdom, just say, good going, fellas. Let's go back and do more of that. I mean, there aren't that many secrets that take place in those locker rooms. In fact, if they let a few fans in, nobody would be very interested <laughs> after two or three. I don't know. If they try that, I think uh, <laughs> you can sell some tickets, John. 40 seconds to go on the half. There's Gastineau leading the charge. Eason heading to the quarterback, Tony Eason. Gastineau. Tom Baldwin helped on that. Good penetration up the Tom middle. Baldwin. Does not allow Baldwin a quarterback to step Gastineau up to and get out from under. And that's what the, the Jets play. have been Six giving Gastineau the last two or three weeks. Good, good defensive tackle play. Good penetration. Now Gastineau Lost comes from behind when he steps five. up and makes the sack. So the combination of Gastineau and Baldwin, and apparently they have credited Gastineau with a full sack, making it 14 and a half to lead the NFL. And, uh, you know, if, if Dino Marchetti had had to pay $500 every time he made a sack to a charity, he'd have been out of salary after about midseason. Of course, they didn't count sacks then. They just count the times you got the quarterback out of the game, and he had eight or nine of those a year. There's Tony Franklin getting ready just in case. Gastineau donating $500 for every sack he comes up with to the Tomorrow's Children Fund for young cancer patients at Mount Sinai Hospital. So uh, there's $500 for Mark being sent to Mount Sinai. There's the timeout situation. That's a tricky little defense. I don't know what he was looking to the sideline for, but there, you can look for him to be playing some sort of a game with his defensive tackle on this play. And Joe Klecko, who has sat out most of the first half with that badly bruised elbow. 45. 
The word earlier was that he might return second half. Eason had the time. Derek grabs it. Inside the 35, stopped by Darrell Ray. Down to a half minute to go. They're trying to get a playoff. And Troy also in defensively for the Jets in the last play. Penalty marker down. Eason is stopped by Barry Bennett. Eason brought down by Barry Bennett in the penalty marker down at the 34. Tony had a timeout to take. He thought he could get a playoff quickly enough so that uh, he could pick up the first down, then still have a timeout remaining. Didn't work out that way. Now they've got 14 seconds left. He's still got some, you know, he's got a uh, couple timeouts left, so I, I didn't understand why he didn't call one the last time. Outside defense, number 99. A five-yard penalty to make the first down. Fourteen seconds remaining in this first half. The Patriots and the Patriots now with the uh, first and ten at the 28. Patriots with two timeouts left. Y'all be careful. He's able to pull away. Wonderful catch. Somebody call timeout. Five seconds left of the half and a timeout called. And the problem is he does not have enough time to call another play. Because if it is not a touchdown, he will not have any time left on the clock. This is what Easton seems to have eyes in the back of his helmet. He feels pressure so well. That's why he's able to get out. He knows where they're coming from. He seems to elude them very easily. Beautiful throw right into a heap of defenders. But I, I expect them, I would expect them to kick a field goal if the Jets had, did not have 20 points. But being 17 points down, even if they kick a field goal, they're going to need more than two touchdowns to win. And uh, one of Raymond Berry's uh, first decisions as a new head coach, I'd go for, I would personally go for the field goal right here. Well, what they do or do not do here, whether it clicks, could determine the tone the rest of the way. You bet. If you get, if they've been down there. This is their third time, and they've only got, they've only got three points to show for it. Unless they have an exceptional play, which they certainly haven't shown in the first two series down close to the goal line, I'd kick the field goal. You're playing at home. Well, the popular choice with the crowd, you know, will be going for the six. Yeah, well, they don't have, their job isn't up there. It's uh, file them. They're, they're going to have a go at the touchdown, but uh, <laughs> all right. Let's see, he's writing down. Uh, let's see what happens if we don't make this one. <laughs> Five seconds remaining in the half. First and goal from the 10. Intended for Stephen Starring. And I'll tell you what, he knew there was five seconds left, and he was either going to see him come wide open in the end zone or fire it in the ground quickly. You'll, You'll notice it was a two-step drop, took one second. The ball was on the ground in three. I think he was one up on me there. Ethan. Maybe that's why they've got Raymond oh, yeah. Berry as the head coach. John, I didn't want to bring that up. <laughs> but here is Tony Franklin, who earlier hit from 20 yards away. This a 27-yard attempt. Punter Luke Prestridge will put it down. Bad snap. But he's able to hit. Prestridge able to straighten out that snap. So the half ends with Franklin hitting for 27. And you'll see why Tony Franklin had a little problem getting that ball up. If Easton didn't have the hands he has and make the real, the real fine reception of a bad snap, they could have had nothing. And it was Eason putting it down, not the Prestridge, as the Jets fall. And four out of six, 41 yards. Tony Eason, 15 for 22, 166 yards. And a rarity, he was picked off once. Yeah, but that was not his fault. <laughs> Out of deflection. The return by John Williams, the rookie from Penn State. 
again, but good coverage by the Jets. 22-yard return, and the New England Patriots to the offense as we open up in this second half. And I think the glaring statistic is that little flicker of light. 19 yards is not enough by to put Kimball. any sort of balance in your offense. I think it's all going to be on the right arm of Tony Easton. And it gets tougher and tougher to play against the Jet defense without a rushing game. At this point, it has been a quiet day for O.C. Tatupo and Tony Collins. They have not had that many opportunities. And so, Easton uh, figures to remain put the ball in the air, what with his Patriots trailing by 14 points. Tupu with the short pickup, right defensive end, run for roll on the tackle. And, you know, we have mentioned that John Hanna is not with the Patriot offense today. He's got a little neck or back problem. Anyway, those are never good. And Guy Morris, who they picked up from Philadelphia, number 75, has filled in okay but if they haven't moved the ball and their their personality is to run left they haven't been able to do it effectively and they got stuff several key injuries have hit this club the outstanding rookie Irving Fryer also out of action today oh, getting a piece of it to break it off you know you talk about key injuries and key injuries happen to all teams it's the really top teams that can play even though they have them and I think the Jets are a perfect illustration They've had so many stars hurt. How many, how many do you want to go through? Wesley Walker, Lamb Jones, Freeman McNeil. That's enough for some teams. Bobby Jackson, nobody even thinks of him anymore. Marty Lyons out of action. They've lost Bruce Hopper, Mike Augustiniak for the season. Among the Patriot injuries, along with Fryer and Hatta, nose tackle Lester Williams, Robert Weathers, Hunter Rich Camarillo, Johnny Rappert, Clayton Wysoon. Talking about injuries. Fernanza Burgess, their excellent special teams player. Sornick. Third down and eight. Eason hanging right in, but Gastineau comes up with his second sack of the day. He had a clear path. Well, Eason, a clear path? Watch this. Eason is the third man that Gastineau ran into. They tried to handle him at the line of scrimmage. Brian Holloway, the Pro Bowl left tackle. He's one-on-one, -on -one, you think, except Craig Francis James, number 32, is waiting for him to get up. Look at the way he bounces down, gets up, and gets right underneath Craig James. Easton figured, heck, we got two on him. I don't have to worry about him. Wrong. So his second sack of the day, and he was held sackless in that earlier meeting at the Meadowlands. Luke Prestridge back at the two, coming for the fourth time this afternoon. Good one. Kirk Springs. Springs, the Patriot Hawk. Well, let's see. He had one for 89 last week. And this one stopped out of the wall. Unofficially, we have it as an 82-yard punt. When you kick two in the 80, doing okay in back-to-back -back ball games you can see they need something they need a big play to get them with the feeling that they can get back in this ball game that could be the play that does it they got a horrible break on a long on a potential long gainer the starring miss turned it over to Carter that was the first thing that's really rolled properly for the Patriots Luke Prestridge have that ball down by Paul Dombrowski a name we have been calling throughout the day and here are the Jets, first down at their one. Cal Bryan is the quarterback. Tony Payne, stretched up by Larry McGrew, the Tony inside Payne. linebacker. Okay. Both McGrew and Nelson just filling those holes. Pick up a two by day. I, I think the whole Second defense knows that if we don't stop them down here, it could be a very long day as we see Pat Ryan. Still, I'm sure he's a little rocky. When you get knocked out, it's not too easy to come right back. I know covering boxing, uh, you don't see those fighters coming back for another 10 rounds after they get knocked out in the first. Pat Ryan taking that hard hit to the jaw in the first quarter. Second, and eight. Tony Page carries. And again, it's Page, the rookie from Virginia Tech. Toby Williams, Andre Tippett on Andre the stop. Tippett. 
Well, you see, <laughs> you see O'Brien licking his fingers. Maybe that's a tip that they're going to throw on third down and five. But take a look at the aggressiveness of the New England Patriots. They know they've got them backed up. This is their chance to get good field position, get back in the ball game, and this is a very critical play. Marion Barber has come on. And the crowd is back into it. Third down and five. And O'Brien throws. Recovery for the first down by Mickey Schuler, the favorite target of Pat Ryan. But he's been a decoy thus far today. They've looked, they did look to him early, but that's his first reception. They've, they've thrown outside. Unless they open the middle, there's no need to throw the ball inside to Schuler. But look at the, the concentration he's got on the ball. He gets it, it gets out of his hand. Roland James makes a good play, thinks he's got a bobbled ball. Schuler keeps his attention on it, picks up a very big first down. Mickey Schuler, the Jets' leading receiver, and he has caught six touchdowns, which is tops for tight ends in the NFL. First out of the 15. Fred Marion running about. We're set for another update. Let's go to our studios in New York. All right, Marv, down in Houston, Cincinnati is starting to open it up against the Oilers. Ken Anderson swings it out to Larry Kennebrew, who scores his third touchdown of the day. The play covers 11 yards. It is 24-7, Cincinnati, third quarter. Thank you, Bill. Marv Albert, John Brody from Sullivan Stadium, capacity crowd in Foxborough. The Jets lead the Patriots 20-6. to six. It is a second and two. Freeman McNeil with the first down. Steve Nelson on the stop. You know, there's been pretty good quarterback play on both sides of the line of scrimmage, but I think the difference in this ball game thus far is the offensive line for the Jets. They are able to make create movement in the defense of the Patriots when they need it. I mean, second down and long two. The ball carrier barely got contact until he had picked up the first down. I mean, you just every week it seems to be a different phase of the ball of the ball club as far as the jets are concerned and when you got it going keep it going <laughs> and now mcneil is the lone deep back shooter in motion here's mcneil again the first across the 35 and nelson on the stop a flag has been thrown and the flag the flag was thrown and it's it could be anything i'm sure it's against the against the Jets. And the referee Chuck Heverling will reveal the penalty. Holding. Offense. Number 86. <laughs> First down. Number 86. <laughs> That's the tight end. There's Glenn Dennison, rookie from Miami University, the Jets' second pick on the second round. St. Louis now leading Philadelphia. 24-14, Neil Lomax heating it up. He's thrown for two. Steve Brogan on the sideline, talking with the punter, Luke Prestwich. Cincinnati in front of Houston, as you saw. First and 20, back at the 17. O'Brien looking right and left in trouble. Number 98, the nose tackle, Dennis Owens, on the sack. Great secondary coverage. O'Brien really had enough time to throw the ball. Pretty good pass protection, but he had no receiver open, and wisely he ate the ball. Uh, do not make a critical error in this part of the field with a 14-point uh, lead. That, that is a no-no. Dennis Owens now four and a half sacks on the season and he has set the Jets back to a second and 26 back at the 11. Five minutes gone by third quarter. The Jets 20, the Patriots 6. Freeman McNeil and the Patriots played it well. Roland James, the strong safety and the Jets played it safe. The they were not going to put O'Brien into a position of trying to make a big play out of nothing. Second 26 is pretty tough. I look for him to, to run the ball again on third down. The Jets have typically been a running team on second and long. Made six, but that doesn't do him much good. Johnny Hector is back. Wesley Walker. 
involved in the shuffle bringing plays in along with Lamb Jones and Derek Gaffney, Bobby Humphrey, Joe they Walt. Got, they got about 18 first stringers. Third yeah. down and 21 from the 17. will not allow the pull away. You know, I think a, an obvious question is why are they doing that? Well, be, there's two reasons. One is they're going against the wind, which makes it very difficult to throw the ball long. The other is they don't want to get themselves in a trap. They got out of a hole. They're in pretty good punting position. Make New England earn whatever they get. And at this time in the game, I kind of agree with it. And Chuck Ramsey in his eighth season out of Wake Forest, getting set to kick away. Stephen Starring is back. Only the second punt by Ramsey. Connected on a 35-yarder earlier. He is back at his two. And Starring hit down at the 47-yard line returns an area of concern for the uh, Patriots they have yet to break one this season and with Irving Fryer out Patriots forced to use starring in that role 34 yard punt and a four yard return we'll be back after these messages Marv Albert John Brody from Foxborough new Patriot head coach Raven Burry I think he's gonna have to get a bigger sheet of paper get that little bitty card that may not cover it Taking over for Ron Meyer. Few Patriots shedding tears over the departure of Meyer. Meyer this past Thursday. Eason running into his own man. And shovels it for Lynn Dawson. <laughs> that looked like a Jim Plunkett special, and I'm sure the people in New England are familiar with him. The tight end, Lynn Dawson. On that shovel pass, here it is. You know, I think the most impressive thing amongst all these young quarterbacks, the second-year fellows in the league, the Eatsons and the Marinos, is how cool they are and how attentive they are to something happening. Now, that's something you might do in a basketball game, and Lynn Dawson made an awfully good catch. And picked up nine, second and one from the 38. And it's Craig James pulling away, plus a penalty marker. Kirk Springs on the stop of James. Okay, little second down and one and a half. It's going to come back. Kirk Springs making a pretty well designed play. play. Been looking for a chance to see uh, see Craig James get the ball and do something with it. And actually, Pete Brock made an excellent block on the play. Holding offense number 66. When it's going bad, every time you make a good block, it's called back. Every time you make a good run, somebody's offside on the opposite end of the field. So now it's second down and 11. All right, a correction on that uh, penalty. Chuck Heberling changing the number. It's the right guard, Ron Wooten, called for the hold. Second and 11 second from midfield. And again to the ground for James. Good second effort. Lance Bell on the stop. Craig James, the rookie from SMU, who teamed with Eric Dickerson and played for Ron Meyer at SMU. He did that, but he's also playing for Raymond Berry pretty well. I've just been waiting to see him get a chance to carry the ball. It was a very well-designed play, and uh, Easton likes to roll out. This was a little toss back. Brock led it perfectly. Right here, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Back in Foxborough, as you can see, just shy of the first down. So the Patriots will have a third and third inches. And less than a yard on the 37. Craig James, who just reeled off that run, jumped from the Washington Federals of the USFL to New England. He was plagued by injuries in Washington. Now Tony Collins returns to the backfield. There's James, number 32. Lou Erber says of uh, Craig James, he's just like the top players of Jimmy Taylor with, with speed. Well, that, <laughs> that's, that's making a pretty strong nice compliment. Statement. Yes. Patriots 0 for 6 in third down conversion. Making it 1 for 7 as Collins has picked it up. Seven forty left. 
third quarter. The Jets 20, the Patriots 6. A swing around the NFL scoreboard. Pittsburgh now leading Atlanta 21 to 3. Frank Pollard running it in from five yards away in the third quarter. Now Kansas City looking to bounce back from the loss to the Jets last week in front of Tampa Bay. Cleveland under new head coach Marty Schottenheimer in front of New Orleans. First down at the Jet 35 yard line. Eason on the swing for Dawson. Dawson to the 30. Funnel on the tackle. Well, remember the last time these two teams played, Marv? Eason was able to run around back there, create some time for himself, and complete balls to whomever he liked. It looked like a, like a smorgasbord back there, and he did it because they contained number 99. They haven't been effective doing that so far today. They're putting a little more attention on him right now. He was not a factor on that play, and it gave Eason a little more action. That has been a splendid season for Mark Gastineau, despite the earlier problems with the court case, back spasms, the flu. He's been able to ride right through it. Second and five. Off the draw, James. Stop at the line. Buttle right there. Buttle, Crable, and Mel doing the job once again this week. At linebacker, and that was a problem position earlier this year, what with uh, the Jets hit with some key injuries. For updates, New Orleans behind Cleveland, 14 to 10 in the third quarter. Kansas City it is a third down and five four. coming up. This is the time in the game where if you're a coach, you have to think about whether we're trying to pick up a first down with two plays, being 14 points back, or have a go at it right now with one. He's got him wide open, but underthrows the intended receiver, Craig James. You couldn't have had a better play call that opened up more beautifully. Eason just underthrew him. I think he put down bad pass on that one. Yes. BP. Albanochi. And the barefooted Tony Franklin. Who is two for two. This time attempting from 47 yards away. Earlier hit from 27. And from 20. Franklin having himself a fine day. And that's to the extent of the Patriots scoring. 539 remaining. Third quarter. Jets 20. Patriots. While Tony Franklin connecting from 47 yards away. Once again, the Patriot drive fell short and they had to settle for the field goal. So Franklin will kick off. Humphrey, Kirk Springs are back. Humphrey, who did not handle one last week against Kansas City, and obviously clubs looking to stay away from the man who is leading the NFL, averaging 33 yards per kickoff well, return. And I'm, I'm certain that uh, Franklin will stick this deep in the end zone. That's about the only way you can get away from Humphrey. He didn't do it. Well, here's Kirk Springs once again to the 20. Slippery runner. Ball Out to the 25-yard line. Paul Dombrowski, who has had an outstanding day, able to stop Springs after Tatupu just did miss. Well, I think this is a good illustration of the fact that uh, even your front-line players are on special teams nowadays, and the special teams have been such an important factor. Mostly Tatupu just misses the tackle, but he's a first-string fullback. The Patriots trailing the Jets by the score of 20 to 9, five and a half left, third quarter. And it's Freeman McNeil, stopped by Roland James. And you want, James did stop the play, but I think a perfect example of what we've been talking about all day is the block on the... Uh, Andre Pick Tippett, number six. 56. He's been known six as a home record. Take a look what happens to him. 31. He gets a little pull, pull job from Stan Waldemore. He starts to get him, and as soon as he gets moving backwards, Freeman McNeil runs right over the top of him for a gain of six. And 
Freeman McNeil has hit the 100-yard mark once again, so bouncing back from the uh, rib injury intended for McNeil. And the four, Freeman McNeil. It'll be a four down and four upcoming, four and uh, look at that uh, stat. Patriots not able to get going on the ground. In fact, the longest run was uh, moments ago by Craig James. This week's autographed photo on game day. Just under five 73, left. John Third Hanna. quarter. Now McNeil to the sideline, and Johnny Hector has come on. That 100-yard stat uh, featuring a 53-yard run by McNeil. And O'Brien on the run. And pop. So he takes the hard hit. Number 50, it's Larry McGrew once again, the man who got to Pat Ryan in the first half. All right, now you can't expect him to be perfect, but number seven had a chance to pick up the first down. Had he just, had he known exactly where it was. When he gets out, he thinks he's got it easily. McGrew knows where the first down is, just at that, line, that yard stripe. Does not let him get there. That's going to give him the ball in a whole lot better field position. The first down is picked what? up according to the uh, according to the officials. He picked it up. They spotted it at the 35. Well, okay, line. you saw the play. Did you ever see O'Brien get to that line? Did not look like it. No, he did. However, no measurement, <laughs> and uh, they marked his uh, forward progress. Apparently, the uh, feeling that he was pushed back. O'Brien going sideline and picks up five on the play. Wesley Walker. On the uh, reception, Claiborne making the stop for Walker, his first reception. Real good throw, but uh, let's take another look at uh, Ken O'Brien, because this could be a critical first down for the Jets to keep their momentum going. He looks like he's going to pick up the first down easily. He's got to get to the yard stripe that Larry McGrew hits him just before he gets there, and if he made it, <laughs> I'm just at a very bad angle. I was going to mention it, but I'm not at a bad angle. Second and five. And Steve Nelson on the stop. Steve Nelson. Of Freeman McNeil. Nelson, number 57. Tippett, Nelson, McGrew, and Blackman. The linebackers, and they have been dishing out some hard hits. Dallas in front of Indianapolis. Cowboys looking to make it six and three. Kansas City maintaining the lead over Tampa Bay. Green Bay, 35 to nine over Detroit in the third quarter. Finally starting to play a little defense. Dickey has thrown a couple here in the uh, third quarter. First down and three. And O'Brien is hammered down by Don Blackman, number 55. Blackman has been there on several occasions today, and they've all been close. Now we take a look at Ken Sims and Marvin Powell. We mentioned how, what a fine year he's having. Keeps excellent position. O'Brien was forced out of the pocket and taken down easily. Fourth sack of the day for New England. And Stefan Starring awaiting the Chuck Ramsey punt. Ramsey with his third boot of the day. He is back at the 17-yard line. And here is Starring. extracurricular activity on the play it goes for 17 yards the Jets have given the Patriots every opportunity to get back in this ball game and remember the Patriots were behind 23 to nothing to Seattle ended up winning 38 23 so they know they can get back Foxborough 225 left third quarter Patriots coming to life the poor punt by Ramsey that traveled 17 yards New England takes over at midfield. Out of the backfield, Hosey Tatupu. Picking up seven on the play, Carter and Crable combining on the tackle. Join us again next Sunday for an NFL doubleheader right here on NBC Sports. The featured games, including a showdown between two of the great running backs of the game, Walter Payton of the Bears, Marcus Allen of the Raiders, and the second half of the doubleheader, 
Mark Gastineau getting a shot at the NFL's top-ranked quarterback, Dan Marino. The New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. NFL 84 with Bob Costas getting it underway, 12.30 Eastern time. Second and about three. Eason. Oh, it is broken up. Stephen starring with a shot at it. Lance Bell on the cover. He threw a bullet. Yeah, he had a shot at it, but three, yeah. guys, three defenders had an excellent shot at him. And those balls are are almost beyond the call, even if it was a little bit lower. But you'll notice he's got to put his arms up in the air. Tough catch a little bit behind him. And it's you all be careful if you're a wide receiver in there. You all be careful. <laughs> I mean, I've had many receivers that if I did that once, I'd apologize and make sure if I did it again, it was in a very critical situation. Tony Eason is 20 for 28. 186 yards. Third down play for Eason. Has the first down for Morgan. That was an extremely well-designed play. They tried to make sure they double-teamed Gastineau to give Eason a little chance to roll out. Now take a look at the secondary. They're back. They've been covering very well. Man-to-man -man all over the field underneath with their defensive backs. But Morgan comes down, a little delay pattern on Johnny Lynn. He's easy, easily outruns him. Starring gives him a little help, and they've got a first and ten. Third perception of the day for Stanley Morgan. Minute and a half left in this third quarter first down at the Jet 25. Great journey. As we see Raymond Berry noting the fact that number two, number 32 runs pretty well when he gets in the open field. This man was a sensation during preseason, has been used very seldom during the season, but maybe Lou Herbert's right. He's, a, he's a, a Jimmy Taylor for about 10 yards, but he's got a little speed when he gets out there in the open. And it's his first touchdown in the National Football League. Craig James bringing the Patriots right back into it. Tony Franklin now moves the Patriots with it four. And a, almost a smile to the face of the new head coach. Well, listen, he, you can bet his mind's working very fast. I don't think he makes a lot of body movements on that sideline. But he looks like he's in pretty good control. And number 32 cuts back against the grain. All the pursuit over Rand to play. Excellent movement on his part. Gets back on his balance about the 15-yard line and just outruns the whole secondary to pull it within four. The Patriots right back in it off the 25-yard run by Craig James. And, John, he's one of the few Patriots who had kind words for the uh, departed coach, Ron Meyer. He played for Meyer at SNU, although Meyer for a couple of weeks did not use James here. Well, that's just they don't play him by personality or friendship. And again, it's Kirk Springs to the 20 and flags thrown. A lot of them. It looked like a clip and things are not going well for the Jets at this point. They are going to be a, with the wind though in a minute and 15 seconds. So, And you look back at the turn of events and you have to point back to that tremendous punt by Luke Prestridge. Well, a week ago it turned it, it gave him a good shot in the arm. Didn't get him over the hump. Golden, on the return, number 49, first down. Normally you'd say, oh, okay, it's the Jets' turn. They've got to get something going. But I think they're going to run two plays and try to get with the win. If they do throw, I think it'll be short. Take a look at the bottom of your screen. That's a, that's a tackle. And it's first and ten from the eight-yard line. Here's Freda McNeil, stopped by Tom Blackman. And this is a pumped up ball club. You bet. When you give it a team that looked to be out of the football game a chance to get back in it, and there were a few key plays that allowed them back in it, 
Uh, they're only four points down, have not made the most of their situations thus far. I think it's the Jets' turn to get themselves back on track. Second and ten from the eighth. Ken O'Brien, who took over for Pat Ryan, who was hit hard by Larry McGrew and injured his jaw in the first half. And the second back coming through McNeil for a short pickup. Nelson, Sims, Owens on the stop. They're closing it down. The offensive line for the Jets had all the best of it throughout the first two quarters of play. Field position has changed that around a little bit. Excellent block by Page, however, on uh, Steve Nelson. I think they're going to let this, this quarter in. Time running down, third quarter, final seconds, and the crowd responding to this Patriot comeback. At the end of three quarters, Jets 20, Patriot 16 will be back after these messages from your local station. Head coach Joe Walton of the New York Jets. They went at halftime 20 to 6, but right now clinging to a 20 to 16 lead as we open up in the fourth quarter. I think what you're seeing right now, Marv, is a replay of what happened in Buffalo when the Jets decided to go kick off, take the, take the win in the fourth quarter as opposed to the third after they had a team stuffed at halftime. And right now, we'll see if that win's going to be a big factor because they've got a home crowd against them. They've got a team that's only four points down. This better be a good punt. Stephen Starring awaiting the Chuck Ramsey punt. Chuck Ramsey punt. His last punt, that 17-yarder, and it cost. Here's Starring, midfield, picking up the block. Returns to the 46-yard line, a 41-yard punt, 7-yard return. And the Patriots take over as we get underway in this fourth quarter. The Jets up 20 to 16. We'll be right back. 89 yards last week. The 82, as you just saw, Rich Cabarillo waiting in the wings. Yet Prestridge has been superb the last couple of weeks. Patriots first down for the 45. And Eason fires deep. The cover by Russell Carter. Stanley Morgan, the intended receiver. Excellent, excellent pass protection. The, the play of the offensive line for New England has picked up drastically in the last quarter. And now that they're back in the ball game, everybody has to suck it up and do their job. Take a look. Everybody's man on man. Look, number 99 is not getting away from Haley this time. Easton throws the ball a little bit under. Carter, good coverage, second 10. From the 45-yard line, Holloway and Haley at the tackles, Morris swooping at the guard, Brock is the center. Cedric Jones in motion. The shovel. He's been a crowd favorite around New England for several years. Had limited playing time. It seems like every time you have to call on somebody to make a big play, they call on Mosey and he's up to the task. This is an excellent developing screen. You see that's Pete Brock, number 58, leading the play. Tatupu follows his blocks perfectly. First and 10 on the 21, four points down. So the Patriots on the move once again. Two minutes gone by, fourth quarter. who scored on a 25-yard touchdown run just moments ago. In fact, that 25-yard run equaled the high for the season for the Patriots. Eason had run for 25. And uh, it also was more than the Patriots picked up in the first half rushing the ball. Second down and seven. Dallas over Indianapolis now 19-0 the fourth quarter as Septian is hit from 19 yards away. Chicago leading Minnesota in the second. Second and seven. And again the strength over Kings. 
one way. Darryl Ray, the free safety on the stop, along with Tom Baldwin. It is close to the first down marker. It's the, it's the really top backs, in, uh, and Craig James has shown me that he can get away from one defender. When you get a one-on-one -on -one situation with a linebacker and a back that weighs 225 that can move, you want to get him the ball in that area as often as you can. That was a one-yard play that turned into a seven-yarder. Those are big. Third at about a yard and a half from the 12. They're packed in tight. Very nice move, but he could not retain his balance. He ran into one of the cheerleaders. And a correction that was Tony Collins. She's pretending right. to be okay. There's Collins. Right down. This play is stuffed at the point of attack. There's nowhere to go. Collins sees a little daylight outside, and except for the speed of Johnny Lindy to run it in. And it is a first and goal at the five. If that was in the grass, I'll let him a watch. And that's the problem, and it's a judgment call for the officials. It's one of so many that they have to make. Tony Eason was all over the official as, although he completed the pass, the in the grass call was made. Another good break for the Jets. And you know, we talk about penalties, and there are two more or three more per game than there have been throughout the history of this. NFL, and it's those judgment calls that really get the fans higher up. Uh, you, I just as soon, and it, I don't think it protects the quarterback either. You see, Gastineau's barely got a hold of his arm. He doesn't have any more control than Eason has. Tough call. Uh, I think it's a wrong one. And it is a, a second and goal from the 12. Here's Eason on the run. Down to the six. Bob Crable on the tackle. Well, Pat Ryan is limbering up. Well, I think he's been their guy all year long. When they need to get something done, he comes in and makes it happen. How many times throughout the year has he come down from being behind as the Jets were behind in all their ball games except for last week? And he, he has shown that he is the type of person that can rally a group when they need it. And I think if he can play, he better get going. Ken O'Brien looked sharp when he first took over in the first half, but not able to do much in the second half. No field position, and they didn't elect to throw. Third and goal from the five. Eason throws. Touchdown. <laughs> Stephen scoring on the score, and the Patriots have taken the lead. We've got the man who just received the ball, makes a good play, gets into the end zone so that he can come back on it. Eason made a perfect throw. They now take a two-point lead, threatening to make it three. Look at Eason move around in the pocket. He wants to go to the left. He can't do it. Got enough room to step up. Straight fire. So the Patriots, who are trailing up the half, 20 to 6, have overtaken the Jets. With 10 minutes, 53 seconds remaining, fourth quarter, the Patriots lead the Jets by the score of 23 to 20. By the Patriots now lead the Jets 23 to 20. You've been making a lot out of that win situation, the decision by the Jets. Well, I think Joe did the same thing against Buffalo. I personally feel if you have somebody down, you better stay after him because if you allow the momentum to shift, wind or no wind in your favor during the fourth quarter it makes it all very tough you've got the home crowd against you and obviously uh, Joe Walton doesn't agree but uh, 
Now we'll see if they can move the ball in the fourth, finding themselves behind. And Tony Franklin king it up. And you wonder if Pat Ryan is about to take over for Ken O'Brien. Well, I'm sure it depends on how healthy Pat Ryan is. You know, you don't know how how severe that blow was, and I'm sure that'll dictate whether he comes back. What's this? That's a strange one. And Tony Page, one of the up men, fielding it. It, det it details the severity of the wind is what it does. Page called a fair catch. <laughs> Bright. All right, here is Pat Ryan. Joseph Gasparini in Springfield. Moving back on, a uh, look Joseph at Gasparini the win factor day. here in this fourth quarter. So Ken O'Brien back to the bench. And Pat Ryan, who took a real solid lick from Larry McCrew in the first half, is back on the scene. First down at the 35-yard line. Freeman McNeil. Stopped by Ken Sims and Larry McGrew. Tell you what, you've got a you've got a wild bunch out there in red and white right now. I don't care whether they're with the win or what. They think they're going with it. That will swing you around the NFL scoreboard. Catch you up. St. Louis now in front of Philadelphia by 17. Kansas City by one over Tampa Bay. Cincinnati leading Houston. Green Bay running away from Detroit and uh, there's. Cleveland looking for win number one under Marty Schottenheimer. Second down and eight at the 38-yard line. And here's Ryan. He'll be going downfield. Intended for Johnny Lamb Jones. And that's the first ball they've thrown more than 15 yards down the field all day. Their game plan was to control the ball, and you can do that when you have a Freeman McNeil with short passes and a good running game. But right now, the defensive front seven for the Patriots is playing so well. They're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage as the Jets did early. They're going to have to find a few tricks. They've got a few plays left. As we see Rod Russ, the man that was fired, rehired, and right now ahead. Five minutes gone by, fourth quarter. And Ryan given the time. Well, he had the first down. Did Wesley Walker, but off the circle route. He, uh, let's see, unless they are going to spot it. Nope, he lost it. Well, you see, Joe, you, see, you see Joe scratching his head, but it's a very hard thing for Walker, even though he knows where the first down mark is. Watch, he's got to come back on this ball. And obviously it's nice to have the first down, but he doesn't want somebody picking it off. He comes back to get the ball, tries to get around. It's a natural reaction to try and get around Nelson. Didn't work for him. So the punt unit is on, and here's Chuck Ramsey for the fifth time today. Stephen Starring back at his 20-yard line. A quickie series for the Jets. His Patriot uh, defensive unit on fire. Good punt by Ramsey. Starring to the 15. Bingham on the stop, 46-yard punt, 11-yard return. And let's check out the penalty. That's a good break for the Jets, Marv, because uh, they could have let that ball go in the end zone, had it on the 20-yard line. Instead, starring trying to make a big play, gets his team back inside their own 10 against the win. Number 95 on a receiving team. First down, number 95, Ed Reynolds, second-year man out of Virginia. Called out a penalty, so 8.55 left fourth quarter. The crowd responding to the Patriots as a timeout is called. New England, 8.55 left fourth quarter. Patriots take over first down from their 11. And it's Tatupu out to the 14-yard line, Bob Crable. On the stop, Patriots have come from behind. The Jets were leading by scores of 13 to 3, 20 to 6 at halftime. But the Patriots in command in the second half. And they would love to cap off what has been a week of turmoil. The coaching change or changes. Raymond Burry taking over, falling behind badly. 
Good cut from behind effort. They've got the Patriots all pumped up at home, come back from a 17-point deficit. If things were ever up against the wall for the Jets, they are right now. They've come out of from inside their own 10-yard line. There's 8.08 left to play. The offensive line's starting to play an awful lot better for New England. Look at Brock. Secondary help on Gastineau keeps him off Eason. Two different teams. Sixth catch of the day by Dawson. Frank James now, the lone deep back. First out of the 39. Here's James. And another New England first out. We mentioned the offensive line has started to really play some football. Now you're going to see a real good illustration of stretching out a defensive front four. If you get good contact with the defense, and you'll see Haley... Darrell gets good, a good piece on Gastineau. He's trying to run the ball down the line, but all the interior linemen on the inside sealed off. When they did so, it allowed James to cut back, pick up a big first down. They're doing it at will right now. James has carried the ball five times for 50 yards. First down at midfield. And again, the quick opener for James. Lance Bell on the stop. Seven minutes, 15 seconds remaining. In this fourth quarter, the Patriots with a record of five and three. They have beaten the Bills, the Seahawks, the Jets, the Browns, the Bengals. The losses twice to Miami ripped up last week. And uh, that one loss earlier to the Redskins. And we know what a big ball game this is because the Jets play two more divisional games than do the Patriots. And they'd have a chance if they won this ball game to beat them even if they tied. But... If the Patriots win, they've beaten the Jets twice. They're tied in the standings, and the Patriots would be on a run. And particularly looking down the road, should the Patriots and the Jets finish in a tie and looking to the wild card spot, the Patriot win here today would mean a sweep of the season series. A timeout called. When we resume, it'll be second and seven from the 46. Oh, Marv Albert with John Brody. 6.45 remaining fourth quarter. That is Pat Ryan and Freeman McNeil just waiting to get the ball back. You cannot score without it. And right now the Patriots are not about to give it up. Second down and seven. Play action. Eason chased by Mel and Gastineau. And tripped up by Gastineau. I mean to tell you... Gaston picked up about four yards on East, and it used to be where quarterbacks could outrun all the defensive Third linemen. Now there are very few of them can outrun any. The 41. This man is something, and about 265 to 70 pounds. He gives it a go from the time the opening whistle blows till the last one sounds. Here he gets rid of Daryl Haley late. Easton steps up. Now let's see who wins this foot race. There's nobody downfield to handle Eason. If he gets by 99, he does not. It is third and two. And the pattern for Gastineau has been that he seems to come on stronger as the game progresses. Third down play from the 41. Third and three. James for the first time of the ball. Inside the 30. Stopped by Johnny Lynn. has been a major factor. He is so good at reading what's going on downfield. When you have some backs just have the knack for looking at a secondary, looking at the positions of players defensively, making the right move instinctively. He certainly seems to have that at 230 pounds with his speed. I think you're going to see an awful lot more of them. Craig James had an knee problem, suffered during preseason. It did set him back earlier and then did not get the playing time. First down for the Patriots from the 30. And again, James picks his way. Tell you what, he, he looks he looks a little bit like Eric Dickerson, the way he's the way he's jumping around inside blocks and running through arm tackles. He's been a pretty good secret. And it was a uh, Nice backfield on SMU with James and Eric Dickerson combining. 
I, the one thing I never quite understood is how come they didn't play them both at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I know they had that position very well manned, but ask Rob Meyer. I'll, I'll file that. Second out and two at the 21. And here he is again. Well, you can say that he has been well rested. This is his first action in two weeks or three. He doesn't look too tired either. When you're running as free as he's running, it's just find the space in the secondary, pick up as many more as you can. He's come off the field, and I think the people in Foxborough sum it up pretty well. 25 of the 77 yards on that touchdown run. He has now set up first and goal from the seven, and Mosi Tatupu has come on, replacing James. And this is Tatupu inside the five. They have a real good offensive line contact. Brian Holloway made a pass three yards is a long way down there inside the ten. And again, as we sit and look at all of Mosey's uh, fans, Mosey's mooses, they call them, right down there by the end zone. Only three minutes and ten seconds left in this ball game. They've had it for the last five. If they score here, it's lights out. Well, the Patriots could not do it on the ground in the first half, and they are shredding the Jets at this point. Tony Collins concluding the play. They'd have probably used them, Marv, but they used everybody that ever carries the ball in the state of New England on this drive. James took it four or five times to Tupu down inside the 10. This is Tony Collins with an outstanding move to get free and into the end zone, and they take a nine going on a 10-point lead, coming back from 20 to three. And Tony Franklin looking for point number 30. The Patriots off a 10-play drive, capped off by a three-yard run by Tony Collins, have jumped and brought now 30 to 20. And this is just excellent running. There's no design here. You find whatever hole there is in the line, and they've had a few in this last in this last quarter and a half. 2:53 left. They better get them quick if they're going to do anything. This is a ball club that came back from a 23-0 deficit to Seattle to beat the Seahawks, and here they are making the turn again this afternoon. Join us again next Sunday for an NFL doubleheader on NBC Sports. The featured games, including that showdown between two of the great ones, Walter Payton and Marcus Allen. And don't forget, San Marino, Miami Dolphins going up against the New York Jets. It all gets underway. NFL 84 with Bob Costas beginning at 1230 Eastern Time. Check your local listings for the games in your area. That was a six-minute drive. And we mentioned before the game that uh, you asked me what I thought Raymond Berry would do. I said, I think as he is a bright man, he'll sit and observe for a while before he makes any decisions. Those little cards in his hand, I'm sure, are there so that he can make whatever observations he did make. We haven't seen him making a lot of decisions throughout the afternoon, but you can bet he's taking it all in and he loves what he's looking at. Many notes to check over these next <laughs> couple of days for Raymond Burry. 2.52 left fourth quarter. across the 35 Ronnie Lippett on the stop and the Patriots have succeeded in keeping it away from the dangerous uh, Bob Humphrey so Ken O'Brien remains on the sideline and Pat Ryan who took that hard hit earlier and was put out of action uh, continues return during the course of the Jets last series but the Jets now trailing by 10 after leading 13 to 3 they led 20 to 6 at halftime. First 
down from the 36. A bullet thrown by Ryan. Penalty flag down intended for Lamb Jones and a marker thrown. Penalty marker down to 49. It's against New England. We see Ken O'Brien looking on, you know. Holding defense, number 57. Five-yard penalty, first down. You know, he played awfully well in the second quarter and at the end of the first, and really, their structure did not call on him to take a leading role in the third. They ran the ball off tackle. You remember they didn't have very good field position, and that's how the, the Patriots got back in the ball game. from the 41. Good protection. And a beautiful catch by Jones. Ernest Gibson on the stop. The Jets in a hurry up offense as they picked up the first down. That's the hardest play to make in football as for a receiver. Up over your head with somebody taking your feet out from under you and maintaining possession. They've only used about 25 seconds off this clock since they got the ball. They've still got all their timeouts left. 16-yard pass play. Lamb Jones, six catches, 81 yards. Very impressive return to action. Incomplete, but a flag thrown. Bobby Humphrey, the intended receiver. Bobby Humphrey. And the clock stopped with two minutes, seven seconds left in this fourth quarter. It's against the Jets. I would think they'd decline it. An extra play is a whole lot harder to defense at this stage in the game. It's declined. Second down. And so the Patriots do turn it down. It'll be a second and ten. At the 42-yard line, Joe Walt to your left, Raymond Perry. Ryan able to duck out a trouble and complete for the first out of the 31 to the tight end. Mickey Schuler. He throws with people in his face as well as anybody in the game. You cannot ruffle the man. John Blackman defensively for He does not feel beat, and so and thus he isn't. <laughs> And the official timeout, apparently they're having some difficulties with the clock. It should be about two minutes remaining, and now they have reset it. So the timeout with the Patriots leading the Jets by the score of 30 to 20. Two minutes left. For New England Patriots with a 10-point lead, 30 to 20. Off the turnaround of the second half, the Jets first and 10 down at the 31-yard line. They have to score fast, and they have to get the ball back for any chance. Next Sunday, the Jets are home for Miami. Next Sunday, New England will play at Denver and then home for Buffalo. That's Schuler in motion. And it is picked off. Let's see what the call is. Steve Nelson was around the ball. They're still sorting it out. The Patriots indicating the interception, and it is. And Steve Nelson played that ball perfectly. You don't expect a linebacker to be able to cover your tight end when he makes his turn in. Nelson, he kind of uh, predicted where the ball was going to be thrown. You can see a little frustration going on right now from the Jets' side. Now they're going at and each other right I now. Think, I think you can, this illustrates the importance of the ball game. Both teams know how important it is in their standings, and I think all realistic opportunity for the Jets to win this game is about over. And I've noted a few things throughout the day that's unique about the Patriots. As we watch Pat Ryan throw the interception, they have come back from, a, from being down quite a ways, something they haven't always done. They've won a big game, which is something they haven't always been able to do. And Craig James has come on, and I think will be a very integral part of this group. 
Roland James and Steve Nelson applying the coverage on Mickey Schuler and Nelson was able to come up with the interception. So for Steve Nelson, his first intercept of the season. And it stops the jet drive. O.C. Tatsupu with a minute and 50 remaining. Marv Albert, John Brody, Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough. And the New England Patriots leading the New York Jets in a come-from-behind effort for the new head coach, Raymond Burry. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman, coordinating producer Ted Nathanson. Today's game produced by Peter Ralph, directed by John Gonzalez, technical director Steve Savino, and associate director Dave Hoffman. You'll notice that uh, Gonzo has been over there on uh, Raymond Berry throughout the afternoon. He hasn't changed expression. When they were down by 17, he had this very same pose, arms folded, eyes attentive on the football field. You know, there are some guys you just expect good things to happen to, and I think Raymond Berry is one of those. And Joe has had a tough go. He's got off to a good lead in a very big ball game. Maybe, that maybe he tucked it under his arm a little bit in the third quarter, even though they were against the wind. Pats were able to get back, and then it was all downhill. You now you look back to last week's Jet victory over Kansas City. There were several Jet players who felt that complacency set in after the Jets moved in front. 21-0, that's Craig James on the carry. In fact, Joe Fields tried to uh, spark the ball club on the sideline. He felt the Jets let down after the... Uh, that the might have been. That's something you can only really tell amongst your own group. But we take a look at the Patriots' schedule for the next five games. All those teams, I think they match up well against and should be able to beat. Timeout has been called. The Jets now down to one timeout remaining. And on the other side of the coin, Marv, those two little figures in white show a team that's 8-0 at this point. It doesn't look as if anybody's even in a position to, uh, to give them a real competitive go. So it's uphill for the Jets. I'd like to thank our spotters today, Joe Foresky, Ron Hobson, statisticians Danny Green, and Bill George. We are down to a minute and 39 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Patriots doing it in the second half. 47-yard field goal by Tony Franklin, cut it to 20 to 9. Late third quarter, Craig James, who has been magnificent, drilling off the 25-yard run for the score, cutting it to 20 to 16. And then it was Eason to Stephen Starring. Five-yard touchdown, a 23-20 New England lead. And then Collins capping off a drive with a four-yard run to extend the score to 30-20. to And the Patriots just looking to run it out. Here's James. Barry Bennett on the stop. And the clock is stopped with a minute and 31 remaining. All right, now it's down to the point where, as we see, Ray Berry standing there in his similar pose. Uh, they have to get the ball and score it quick, get an onside kick, because they have no timeouts left. If, if the Patriots ever get the ball back before they give up 10 points, it's history. So the final timeout being used right here, the Jets are their way to dropping to six and three. The Patriots on their way to a six up, three down record and to a sweep of the season series from the Jets. They played offensively against the Jets both times uh, extremely well. And in the earlier meeting, it was for the most part the passing game of Tony Eason in the first half here running game was quiet came alive though second half second half the offensive line got off its stuff and started moving people around and luke prestridge who had that key 82 yard punt that helped turn things in the second half averaging 48 yards today this is fifth punt big rush and good hang time 
41 yard punt. And Kirk Spring had a call for it at midfield with a minute and 24 remaining in the fourth quarter. And handshake for that man, Luke Prestridge. Had a terrific day. Pat Ryan, who still may be suffering with a. Oh, you know he's hurting, and he's going to be hurting tomorrow, but the scoreboard is what really is of concern. And on the Sports World scoreboard next Saturday, San Juan, Puerto Rico will be the setting. WBC lightweight champion Edwin Rosario going against the top contender, Jose Luis Ramirez. That'll be next Saturday, starting 4.30 Eastern time. The dump off with Kelly Hector puck the hit. Tippett, the man dishing it out. And with no timeouts remaining, the Jets in the hurry up. We're down to one minute left, fourth quarter. Sideline just looking to stop the clock. Incomplete. That's a hard thing to do without timeouts. Tony Eason, who had another solid afternoon, second year out of Illinois. He made his first pro start against the Jets last year, replacing the injured Steve Grogan. Had a rough time and uh, has done it this season against the Jets in both ball games. Made his mark earlier in bringing the Patriots uh, from way back for the victory against Seattle. Well, Herber has given him so much to work with right now in the play selections and the sort of plays they execute. Last year, he did not. And that is rule complete. Uh, first down for the Jets, but the clock is running. Here's Craig James, all smiles, which is understandable. Down to 40 seconds. First down from the 37. Roland James coming up with his second interception of the season. seconds remaining Roland James in his fifth season out of Tennessee one of New England's most consistent defensive players picking off Pat Ryan well you know th this is a very tough loss for the Jets uh, knowing that they could separate themselves two games from the Patriots if they had a win got off to an early start could not get the job finished but for the Patriots it gives them I think a, a stimulant to carry them on through the rest of the year. And although this is the capper, the interception by Nelson about five minutes ago was the one that really put it on ice. New England will just run it out. Tony Eason holding on, and that will wrap it. Clock running down. The New England Patriots making it a two-game sweep. In his NFL head coaching debut, Raymond Berry, who took over for Ron Meyer, has come up with the victory. Did not start out well for this man, but checks with the big lead, leading at halftime by the score of 20 to 6. And now there's the gun to conclude matters here in Foxborough. The Patriots over the Jets by the score of 30 to... Hi again, everybody. Bob Costas in New York, and now the Patriots have defeated the Jets twice this year, 28-21 at the Meadowlands and 30-20 to in Foxborough. Let's take a look at some of the highlights, lowlights, if you happen to be a Jet fan. It started out as if Raymond Berry and the owner of the ball club, William Sullivan, would do all their smiling before the game because it was the Jets who were in control early. Ken O'Brien, in place of Pat Ryan, who was shaken up, goes into the end zone to Rocky Cleaver. That followed a 53-yard run from scrimmage by Freeman McNeil to set it up, and it was 10-0 in favor of the Jets. But in the second half, the Patriots rally. Here's that Craig James run. It cut the lead to 20-16 to in the third quarter. About eight minutes to go in the game, the Patriots take the lead for good. Tony Eason, a five-yard pass to Stephen Starr, in the end zone. That makes it 23-20. Later, Tony Collins scores. He is out of the doghouse now with Ron Meyer out and Raymond Berry in from four yards out. Collins touchdown made it 30-20, to and that was the final score in the ball game. It is worth noting that Luke Prestridge had an 82-yard punt in that game for the Patriots. A week ago against Miami, he had an 89-yarder. Dallas is now 6-3. They beat Indianapolis by a score of 22-3 in Dallas. Danny White got the nod from Tom Landry as the starting quarterback, replacing Gary Hogaboom. 
Early in the ball game, the Colts setting up for a 50-yard field goal attempt. Ron Stark fumbles, runs for his life, and then his pass is intercepted by Bill Bates, and that scoring threat is ended. Danny White threw two touchdown passes in the first half for Dallas. This is the first of them. 38 yards to Tony Hill. For Hill, his first touchdown of the 1984 season. Later, White went five yards to Doug Cosby. They led 13-0 at halftime. Raphael Septien kicked three field goals in the second half for Dallas. They win it 22-3, and Tony Dorsett gained better than 100 yards for the first time since December of 1983, covering 11 games. Chicago beats Minnesota. The score there is 16-7. Walter Payton passes the 1,000-yard mark for the season. There's Mike Ditka, the head coach of the Bears, who are now 6-3. Jim McMahon, second quarter, with a touchdown pass to Dennis McKinnon. It covers 18 yards and makes it 13-0 Chicago. But the Bears' pass rush was the story of the day. Archie Manning is sacked here by Todd Bell. Chicago had a club record 10 sacks for the afternoon as they beat Minnesota 16-7. By the way, Peyton ties Franco Harris. This is his eighth 1,000-yard season. That's an NFL record. Pittsburgh is in front of Atlanta. Make that a final score. Pittsburgh wins it by a score of 35-10. to 10. Mark Malone threw three touchdown passes, two of them to the veteran John Stallworth. Pittsburgh leads the AFC Central with their record of 5-4, and four, and Atlanta with the loss is 3-6. and six. Ahmad, you had your eye on that game between the Jets and the Patriots. Your impression? I was sort of pulling for the Jets. You know, they started off extremely strong, and they were leading 20-6 to six at halftime, but that's where they quit, and that's when New England came back strong. You know, when you play on a team and a coach gets fired, either you can, you can say, that's it for the season, we'll wait till next year, or you can get fired up because a weight has been lifted off you, you can go out and play good football, and that's exactly what New England did. If we can assume, and it's a big assumption, but I don't think an unreasonable one, that Miami is going to be the winner in the AFC East, then you look at teams like New England and the Jets, they are really going to be in a fight for those wild card positions. So many good teams in the AFC West that will be battling for it. It's going to come down to the last weekend, looks like. It was a big loss for the Jets because they got swept by, by New England. But the thing about professional football is you don't have time to worry about yesterday. They got Miami next week. And this would have been a game the Jets would have loved to have won to keep that momentum going, to come in at 7-2 and two against Miami. Now they've got to shake off this defeat and then think about the Dolphins. It's going to be tough. You have it right, Bobby. They've got to shake it up and they've got to start tomorrow thinking about Miami. All right, Ahmad, we thank you very much. Now stay with us. There are more scores and highlights to give you, and we'll do it as the Budweiser NFL Report continues right after these messages. No club record. <laughs> 30, 34 to 14 the final up in Philadelphia. Tampa Bay and Kansas City, 24 to 13 is the score. 24 to 20 now as the Buccaneers have scored. That is the score late in the fourth quarter at Arrowhead Stadium. One problem for John McKay has been the Buccaneers' performance on the road. They've lost all four road games this year and 15 of their last 17 away from Tampa Stadium, but they're making it close. Bill Kenny's 27-yard touchdown pass to Henry Marshall in the fourth quarter is the difference in that ball game. Cincinnati and Houston, the problems continue for the Oilers. The Bengals' offense has struggled, so today Sam White went back to his veteran as Ken Anderson started at quarterback. Anderson moved the club, but Larry Kennebrew put it in the end zone. He put it in four times. This one gave the Bengals the lead, 14-7. to seven. Here was the turning point, though. Third quarter, fourth and seven. Oilers trying to keep their drive alive, but Warren Moon is sacked by a Ross Browner. Then the Bengals began to take control. Here's a Larry Kennebrew touchdown, one of four on the day, as we said. A pass from Ken Anderson, 31-13. to 13. The Bengals go to three. Three and six. Houston falls to 0 and 9. This is a final now. Green Bay over Detroit, 41 to 9. Lynn Dickey had a spectacular day at one point, completing nine consecutive passes. The Packers snapped their seven-game losing streak. The Lions have problems now on offense, obviously without Billy Sims. Dickey threw four touchdown passes. New Orleans and Cleveland, 16 to 14, the final. It was the coaching debut, the head coaching debut, of Marty Stottenheimer. But he struggled. At least he watched his club struggle. The Saints scored first. Richard Todd, a two-yard touchdown pass to Hokey Gaijan. But the Browns came right back. Paul McDonald, a five-yard touchdown pass to Ozzie Newsom. It was 7-7. Seven seven. Then Cleveland took the lead. Paul McDonald again to Ozzie Newsom, a touchdown pass of six yards. But then with six seconds left, Morton Anderson lines up a 53-yard field goal. It is good as you see the clock running out. 16 to 14 Saints the final. New Orleans now four and five. The Browns go to one and eight, and that is a problem that Sam Ritigliano had as the Browns lost four straight by a total of 12 points. Was that phone call for you? Uh, no, no. As a matter of fact, Bill, it was for you. Oh, I don't know how you. many times I've had don't to tell you. Call me no here. personal calls in the studio. I mean, the man is just out of control, ladies and gentlemen. There's no other explanation. And we'll continue 
in just a moment. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. And Raymond Berry, flanked by two of his assistants, Lou Erber, who runs the offense. Uh, he is the man to his right, and Rod Russ, the defensive coordinator to the left. Raymond, congratulations on your first NFL head coaching victory. Now, at halftime, down 20 to 6, were you beginning to wonder, why did I take this job? No, not in the least. I have a lot of confidence in uh, our personnel and our coaching staff, and I know the uh, capabilities they have, and to me, it's just... Uh, matter of putting it together and getting the right things going and uh, I really was very confident we were going to win the ball game. Anything in particular that was said to the team at halftime? No, I don't think we said anything. Uh, ate their oranges and drank a little water and got, uh, <laughs> you know, instructions from Rod Rust on the defense and Lou Arbor on the offense. These two men have done a tremendous job here today. And the defense certainly came alive in the second half along with the running game which uh, could not get going in that first half yeah you know when you got good players it's just a matter of time keep running them they're going to break it and they did uh, that uh, i was expecting to happen and i know that uh, we had good balance really and the defense uh, snuffed them out when he had to and the offense moved the ball when he had to i'll tell you i hate to mention people there's so darn many people here in this ball game today that did a tremendous job i started naming them i know i'd leave out somebody was as you look back to this ball game, any particular turning point? We were talking about that 82-yard punt by uh, Luke Prestridge. Anything that sticks out in your mind? Well, I'll tell you, I've got a lot of notes in there about turning points, and I had a little black star by a bunch of them, yeah. and I know there must be about eight or ten of them in a game. I wish I could straighten it all out. There were so many big plays today. I know that particular play you pointed out, obviously, was a tremendous lift for us, and it seemed like, uh, I don't know, the fans got with us and everything happened, I guess, about that time. But from that point on, from my memory, hey, it was a lot of momentum going our way. Raymond, thank you very much. And again, congratulations. All right, thank you. Raymond Burry, the new head coach of the New England Patriots, Marv Albert from Foxborough.